Live from Brooklyn, New York, this is Stay Busy with Armand Sadler. Well, you know that I'm the guy. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of Stay Busy with Armand Sadler, where we have responsible discussions on the entertainment business and the entertainment culture. I am your host, head honcho, vegan chorizo poppy, founder of BNB. Uh, the bald nigga bombshell has entered the podcast studio. Chine Du, the only man to sit in front of Taylor Rooks and never tell a lie, Armand Sadler. Um, the gang is not complete this week, but we have a great person who is sitting in with us to complete what would be the normal trio. However, buzzing, looking fly as always, Miss Two B's in the building. What's up with you? How you doing? I'm good. I was waiting for my little AKAs. Oh, I'm fuck. A, I'm gonna give you I next, folded. I folded. And next week though. Next I got week. you. I got you. I got but you. I'm good. Missed y'all. It's good to see you. Good Likewise. to see you as always. How, how was how, how was mom's birthday? It was good. You know, I'm finally a homeowner now. There we so. Go. That was us celebrating. Salute. Thank you. That was us celebrating our home, um, celebrating her birthday. I haven't been around a bunch of Panamanians in a minute, so <laughs> it was like overstimulating, mm-hmm. but also heartwarming yeah. a lot of times too. So I had a good time. Love that. Love that. How's I, your weekend? Uh, I didn't do sh- actually. I went to the party next door concert on Friday. I lit. went to that too. That was, oh, you was there? No, the day before. Oh, the Thursday one. Okay, mm-hmm. yeah. Like, man, I ran to so many people that I hadn't seen in a minute. Like, industry. Like, it was like a, one of those industry events that everyone yeah. goes to. Uh, but it was dope. Party was good. Like, he's not like an amazing performer, but you just love the song so much that like that with a couple Blackberry lemonades with Henny in them. You, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You get right. You get right. So I was, I, I was, that was great. And then I went to the the New York Jets preseason game. Uh, on Saturday, it was like the preseason opener. Got some tickets from my mom's friend. She just hit me like, hey, you want tickets? I was like, I'm not going to say no, even if it's preseason, because the start wasn't playing. But right. it's just cool to see live football and be in that environment. And they won. You know, we, we, we might not get a lot of wins this year. Hopefully Aaron Rodgers changes that. A-Rod, I need you. But um, it was great. Good time. And then after that, I just stayed my ass in. <laughs> you was about like, to say nothing. Yeah. <laughs> you see when I asked him, he was like nothing. Like, yeah, you, you know, he was outside. Stuff just be happening, and like you just forget. Like, yeah, no, I feel all, you. Because all I remember is being home watching uh, USA win the the gold for the men's basketball and the women's basketball. I watched a lot of baseball this weekend, but I actually did go out Friday and Saturday. So yeah, yeah. You thank you for outside. reminding me. <laughs> but <laughs> you almost said nothing. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> oh nothing. I was asleep. Hey, that's the, that's that's it's just the lies we live. We just be forgetting shit sometimes. Nah, like it's that. true though. Yeah. <laughs> but uh listeners, make sure y'all subscribe to the YouTube channel and all your favorite audio streaming platforms. Leave a like, comment, share where you can. Um, and tell a friend to tell a friend about the busy family and all of our great content. And of course, the podcast only fans, Patreon. Follow us at patreon.com backslash stay busy pod. Subscribe to get all unfiltered, raw, unhinged content. We got some new stuff coming for y'all. Um, so, yeah, make sure that you tap in with that. Now, like I said, this is not the normal trio. However, we do have someone who is super dope who is filling in and completing it. So, uh, he hails from Yonkers. You know, Yonkers is home to some legendary rappers. And this man is doing a pretty good job of adding his name to that list. Uh, he's already made some impressive progress, whether that be landing on the Street Fighter Six album, performing at South by Southwest, viral freestyles on the popular platform On The Radar. Speaking of On The Radar, they hosted his June project, Phases Volume 2, which features features local sensations like Dizzy Banco, HD Been Dope, Fergie Baby, and Nico Brim. If you're into lyricism, wordplay, and storytelling, but also turn up, this man provides it all. Look no further than this week's guest in the busy verse, my guy, Iman Nunez. Welcome, my brother. Welcome. <laughs> Hey, thank you for having me. I'm, I'm excited right. to be here. Of course, man. Good to have you. How are you? I'm doing well, honestly. You know, things have been stressful and stuff, but I, I, like I said, I woke up in a great mood today. Mm-hmm. Um, we got a show coming up on Saturday, so like I'm literally just, you know, that's where my focus has been. Mm-hmm. To, to tell the people all, all, all the details for it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. We, uh, we, we do, we, well, I'm headlining, uh, I do a headliner, sh- like a headliner show every year, so like for this year, we're going to the Sultan Room. And we teamed up with On The Radar, you know, because uh, we dropped the Phases 2 project with Gabe hosting and stuff. So Gabe is going to host the show. It was only right. And yeah, we're just going to do another headline show and have a great time. It's in Brooklyn. So, hey, y'all more than welcome to come. Mm-hmm. We're going to have a great time and stuff. It's this Saturday, August 17th. Say less. Okay. Say less. Yep. Since, since we all gave our answers, how did you spend your weekend? Right. <laughs> how did I spend my weekend? 
<laughs> you, you know, it's crazy. I almost said did nothing like you. <laughs> you had to be lying, yo. But I will <laughs> say, I cannot remember what I did. Because you like focused that. on the show. Yo, yeah, because like I'm that. literally focused on the show. I just remember doing a lot of rehearsals. Mm -hmm. And I know I went so We went to a studio session. That's what we did. On Friday, yes. Okay. We had a big studio session with the guys. It was uh, me, HD, Dizzy, TJ, Nico. It was a good... Yeah, we came to Brooklyn and mm -hmm. stuff. And we recorded some really good music. Um, and then... Uh, uh, did I go to the movies this week? Yeah, I, I go to the movies like a lot. Mm -hmm. Like an unhealthy yeah. amount of times. <laughs> so, yeah, movie pass. Uh, I do. I got, I got uh, the AMC stubs. Yo, I, a sponsorship would be great, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, so I, I don't think I went... Yo, I, I did. I saw Trap. That's what okay. I watched. Yeah, yeah. I heard good things about Which that. Which one is that? Uh, it's with M Night Shyamalan, the one that uh, the the serial killer is in. Uh, he's trapped inside of a concert, and they're trying oh, okay. to catch him. I I was shocked. I actually liked it because I'm not really a big fan of uh, M Night's movies mm. too much. I think he has the greatest ideas and the greatest trailers ever. Mm -hmm. But when I go watch the movie, it's not really my type of mm -hmm. thing. I always leave a little disappointed. I like Split a lot, but other than that, it was like, it's cool. But Trap was dope. Okay. Had a good time. That's such a dope fun fact. Like, you go alone? You one of those people? I go like... alone sometimes. I usually go with my pops more than anybody. Mm -hmm. um, he's been doing that with me since, I, like, we used to go since we were young. So, like, he has one of those accounts, too. So, mm -hmm. I will go with either my fiance or my pops and stuff and just really, you know, we just be going a lot. Like, that's like a thing. That's so that's, wholesome. It's a dope, dope <laughs> consistent activity. Hey, right? yeah. That's fire. That's For sure. Fire. Well, cool. I, get, I get to stay away from my phone, too, when I'm in those yeah, type of yeah, environments. Yeah, very important. That's, that's important for me. So. Very important. Yeah. Absolutely. Salute to staying away from your phone. <laughs> we about to talk about a lot of things that have people yeah. in their phones. So yeah. let's jump into this chat. Uh, first, we uh, Carisha broke her silence, I, I guess we can say. Your young Miami broke her silence, did an interview, um, a Carisha Please interview with Saucy Santana for Revolt. Um, discussed what's going on with JT and City Girls, Diddy, of course. Um, did I miss anything? I think that's pretty much it. So for you, who's been like really paying attention to what's what's going on? No, no, like that. <laughs> I mean, we know I've been paying attention. Yeah, like, let's you, be for you, real. you be tapped in. Period. You be tapped in. That's all it was. Yeah, so, those are my sisters. Yeah, for sure. So for you, who's been like, who's really uh, for this pod? So wait, you ain't been tapped in? I, I've, I've, I've been I've been aware. I, I've been paying attention. I saw the clip. All right. I saw the clip that went <laughs> viral. I, I I listened to the episode today. I did, but um, you uh, you kind of function as our like female we, voice. Yeah, like you you're our you. you're our like consultant. I'm the baddie of the show. You're you you're, you're, you're I like, like that. Yeah, yeah I'm you know, the baddie of the show. You're the person who keeps us informed on all these dynamics that may play into things that we may not I'm be aware. Like, of. Oh yeah. That's important. <laughs> yeah, That's, so. Good thing I brought that up. <laughs> so, with all of that said, um, how did you feel seeing the interview? Did you feel like she addressed everything that needed to be addressed? Was there anything you felt kind of like, mm, I wish I could have heard more of that? Like, yeah, I do wish that, um, like, a lot of the times when she claimed that they weren't connecting when they did get together, mm -hmm. I did wish Santana asked, like, what exactly did that mean yeah. or what did that look like? Because, um, you know, that specific question or, like, that specific remark inspired my slide deck mm -hmm. um, for today. Mm -hmm. Because that was a time that it did connect mm -hmm. for me personally. It could be my New York bias, but it connected for me. And I'm just like, maybe if we have more organic situations like that, it would have connected more. But, um, you know, I'm a young lady. I grew up. I've had, like, long-term friendships with the girls. And as we get older and then some of us fall in love or become mothers or become career women, like, our interests just aren't the same yeah. anymore. And, you know, some people just naturally grow apart. And it doesn't help when there are people that are close to you that doesn't care, care for the other person. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what we know publicly is Uzi and Miami had a discussion on, a heated discussion on live once. Um, Southside responded. I'm pretty sure that created a distance between the girls. And then they didn't live in the same state anymore. Yeah. So I just feel like it's a conversation that they should have together without Santana. <laughs> Love Tana down, but that is Miami's friend, mm -hmm. clearly. 
and you know he's always going to be on her side regardless of what so it's it sucks because it reminds me of rap shit getting canceled it's mm -hmm. like art really imitates life yeah. and they had so much ground to cover as a group and i mm -hmm. just hope that they get it together one day yeah yeah, it's a very natural thing. Just like you said, in life, people grow apart. And it's not, it's not a negative thing, but right. especially when it's happening in the public eye mm -hmm. and everyone wants to create rumors about it or create narratives about it and take sides, then it becomes a lot messier. So um, I, I thought our explanation of that was pretty good. I do agree. I wish Santana was an actual journalist who could have known, like, all right, let, let me give a follow-up question to this and ask, right. like, you know, get, dig a little deeper. But, of but, course, they've had those conversations in private. Right, So. Yeah. He knows the answer, so mm -hmm. that's why I don't feel like he was probably the best, but I wasn't yeah. too mad at the interview, but mm -hmm. I want them to get it together. Yeah. He was probably just looking out for his friend, too. Absolutely. So now, Always. Yeah. Absolutely. He's a ride or die. Yeah. yeah. Especially for something that's recorded and edited and produced. Like, I'll say, when I saw the trailer for it, and they made it seem like, like, I think she, uh, Miami said something, and then Santana was like, but you ain't really addressed that. I thought, like, we was about to get some real, like, bombshell type of... Right, he said talk, huh? Yeah, like, re revelation <laughs> or something. And then I listened to it, and I was like, it's, it's like... Shout out to the social producer. Yeah, like, it, 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 yeah, I was like, yo, they did an amazing job marketing it. And it's, it it's, it's, it's kind of like what you said with uh, M. Night, like, a, a great trailer for something doesn't mean the execution of yeah. the full product yeah. is going to give you what you wanted. Mm -hmm. And that's how I felt when I listened to the thing. Like her comments on Diddy and just how they were together and she got with him during the love era and you know he was being he was being celebrated and she celebrated him and she never experienced anything of what you know his allegations are and I was like okay like that's a like yeah fair. yeah like that's a, that's a very fair answer yeah. um but I I guess I guess I got tricked by the trailer I think a lot of people got tricked by the trailer and thinking she was gonna have more of that to say um but. Yeah, I mean, she kept it very fair, very safe. Um, you know, so I think, I think for the people who you know are really super invested in this, they might either be really happy with it or not. I was right. like, eh, you know, whatever. <laughs> Iman, did you listen to City Cinderella? City Cinderella. I was just talking about the joint. The, 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 <laughs> Yo, uh, the I didn't album. get to hear the whole project yet. But that JT Cummins song, <laughs> <laughs> yo, that song is hard. Yeah. No, for and real. And they're doing the, the video with Omarion when they did it for Lil Saint. Mm -hmm. I was like, yo, this is crazy. Mm -hmm. And that even goes in, that's a perfect segue into my point. Like, JT is just way more passionate about the music and yeah. has mm -hmm. always been. Yeah. You know, she's the reason why they even formed the music collective. So I could see, like, you know, they're they're saying a lot without saying a lot. Yeah. Like the group wasn't making any money. So, you know, she Miami started doing her brand deals mm -hmm. and JT, you know, putting mental health into the equation as well. She was released from jail. It was a pandemic. She had a lot to deal with personally before she was ready to like blossom and stuff. So I just the stands make this stuff insufferable. Mm -hmm. yeah. I swear. Yeah. But yeah, they're gonna they're gonna be fine. It was cool to hear Miami big big up herself for helping uh, Diddy's tequila. What's it? De Deleon, because yeah, nobody yeah. was drinking that shit. Yeah, she, like, she ain't lie. Like, niggas know about all the popular celebrity brands, but I never, whenever I thought of tequila or Diddy, like, I was like, I'm not getting no Deleon. I don't know what the fuck that is. So nah. she, she, she definitely helped to boost that. Um, she did. And it, it was cool to hear her, like, be, you know, even though he's public enemy number one, like, him seeing something in her and giving her those opportunities and then seeing her thrive with Carisha Please and thrive with all of her other stuff outside of music. Like, I think that's, like you said, that kind of seems like the natural progression. JT wants to be a rapper. Young Miami wants to be a personality and a brand, and they both yeah. thrive with the things they clearly want to do. Yeah. So, you know, it is what it is. Like, Everybody just, wins. Yeah, yeah, in, in an ideal world. But again, when it's all in the public eye, and a, a group splitting up just makes people automatically pivot to negativity. No, there is. Well, oh, my, my, Miami yeah, did say it's not bad, but it's not yeah, good. Like, there is like drama or like a friction there, <clears throat> but yeah. they're gonna be fine. Yeah, yeah. She's like she, she admitted that they speak. It may not be every day, but they're they're in communication. So yeah. I th I think there's a road for peaceful resolution and peaceful distance. Agreed. Without it being something explosive. So right. Yeah, but um, yeah, I think you know th there was stuff to get out of that. So if you haven't checked out the Carisha Please interview with Saucy Santana, check that out. That's like thirty minutes. Thirty minutes. Yeah, so, yeah it's no real bad. digestible. Um, in new music land, Lotto Sugar Honey Ice Tea dropped. I have a lot of good things to say. Same. I'ma hold them. Y'all can yeah, y'all can give y'all thoughts because I have I have a lot of music thoughts that spill into other things. So I'm gonna say I wanna open the floor to our guests first. 
Well, the thing is, I haven't heard all of it yet. I heard some of it. It sounded pretty. It sounded pretty dope. Mm-hmm. I see the the melodic bag that she's really getting into and stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, the what I heard so far, the production was insane. Mm-hmm. Um. I keep seeing the people keep saying that it sounds a lot like Drake stuff, uh, but yeah. it, <laughs> I haven't I haven't gotten too far into it to right. really to put my judgment on that or anything like that. But uh, well, from what I heard so far, it was, I thought it was I thought it was cool. Like, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I gotta hear the rest of it though. I could mm-hmm. hear the Drake influence right on that intro track for sure. The Georgia Peach. Oh, okay, I heard that. Mm-hmm. I heard yeah. that. Yeah. Um, but, How she ended each note and everything yeah. too. And she, okay. Um, but that was one of like my top three on the album. Mm-hmm. Um, Copper Cove, I think, was that's a, a great record. Yeah, um, H and M, um, Brokey, mm-hmm. of course. That one was a standout. I heard Brokey before. That's, yeah, yeah, like Lotto. I'm real proud of her because I used to watch. Um, I forgot the name of the show that she was on with Jermaine Dupri. Was, was, oh, it was a rap uh, game. Rap game. Rap game yeah, she was a kid. Right? She was a kid with braces. I like, remember Ji was on that. Yeah, too. Ji yeah, the yeah. Prince was on there, and like. You know, I remember her literally asking her dad permission to curse in her music. <laughs> and, like, now she's going so crazy. And, yeah. you know, she has progressed a lot as an MC. I think that a lot of people are going to respect her pen after this and kind of put her in that, like, top three conversation. Yeah. Because it's it's up for grabs. Mm-hmm. In regards to the new females. Absolutely. You know, Nikki did say she number one. Y'all argue <laughs> over top four. She ain't lie about that. So we're I'm I'm glad that we have new acts to compare to new acts. Yep. So um Lotto did her damn thing on there. Um, there were a few songs on there that I felt like we could have did without, like yep. liquor. Um, but my favorite part about the whole thing was her not banking on singles that she released. Yeah. Like over a year ago to have a good solid project because yeah. that's the thing that a lot of new artists are doing. Like they're gonna put that song that we've been streaming for the past year on there to get the streams up. But Lotto mm-hmm. made those bonus tracks. Yeah. So I'm I'm real proud of her. Yeah, I was I was extremely happy with it. Um, I think the, the, you get to the sample on there. She go back then, Mike Jones. Yeah. Um, the sample on Squeeze, I believe. That's was, the one with uh, Meg. Yeah, Black Eyed Peas, My Humps. Yep. Like just super dope. That's it's, how you do a sample. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Sample? That yeah, exactly. Yo, like, yo, but you you gotta listen. Like, we're, 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 I'll call you on the phone next episode. You give the full review. You gotta listen to this. You're gonna <laughs> like, catch she, it because it's our generation. But they did it so tastefully. Like mm-hmm. it's not just ripping off the beat. Yeah, that sounds yeah. tough. No, it was it, it was it was really great to hear. Like that, there, there were moments where I'm just like, all right, like she she's here. You're a she's arrived. Like. <laughs> You know, we've said mm-hmm. it. Lotto can rap really well, but mm-hmm. her her song making has continuously improved. You talked about the melodies; the melodic stuff is great. Yeah. Um. There, there was just a lot to love here, and and I and I really like that she didn't bank on like just the big name features either. It's not a feature in Travis Scott. Yeah. It's not a feature in Lil Baby. It's not a feature in Lil Dirk. It's not a feature in Future even. Like as much as I love Future, like she got with Young Nudie, and there's there's just a sonic chemistry there. Uh, the the song with Huncho Copper Cove is a sonic chemistry. I didn't like there. when he got on there. Who uh, Huncho? Yeah, I liked it. When he came on, I was like, I could do it without this. I fucked with it. I fucked with it. But you, you, you don't like Huncho in general, right? Uh, I don't care for him. Well, was it him or was it someone else? I don't know. You, you, you have a list. I'm about to say. <laughs> you have it, a list of people. It'll be a shorter list of people who I do like. <laughs> um, and I, I saw a, a, a reel today by Damaris from New Rory and Mall, and she talked about how Lotto got the R&B singers to sing the hooks. Like, yes. she, she had hooks where she sang, but she knew, like, there's Coco power Jones. in getting an actual singer to sing these hooks. So you got Coco Jones on Ear Candy. I love her. You got Sierra on Good to You, yeah. Coco Jones, incredible. I I, I remember that that reel where you were raving about Yo. Coco. <laughs> he went to a place just now. <laughs> she's she's special. She's special. She, she she came by the office several months ago. I shook her hand and I just I I just still remember like the the her scent and everything. She's <laughs> Coco's fantastic. stunning. Like, she's fantastic. Stunningly beautiful. Um, but you got Mariah the Scientist singing hooks. You got Tizo Touchdown singing hooks. Like he there's that. there's this real attention to the detail of music. Like not just making shit that's gonna be popular, but like making shit that actually sounds good mm-hmm. and makes sense. And she really did that. And I know the very prevalent conversation is: Is Drake writing for her? Is Twenty One writing for her? And a lot of these songs do sound. 
Drake coded and 21 coded, but they do. she still performs them well enough. Kind of like with Cardi B or people, people, you know, believe she has writers and pe- people have written for her, but she performs them so well that like, you don't even really care. Like right. I, I don't care. Like it, it doesn't bother me because we also know like Lotto comes from music too. Like she's shown us she can rap. So she if she's getting rap. help to elevate it even, even more, I'm personally not that bothered by it. And I think right now, like we said, is, is the time to really try and claim that spot. Like claim that 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 crown. So I love that she's really like putting her put her all into this album, into the marketing of it with the yes. continued like ATL stuff, mm. um, with with the with the thing beforehand where you call and like the features are talking I on the phone. I love that. Like there's just so many cool elements to to what she's doing. Music videos, of course. Like there's a real attention to the detail and the art that shows like she really cares about this shit. Like not just getting popping off of it, but like loves making music. And loves giving it to people. And mm-hmm. so I was really happy with it. Um, I saw a clip from Joe Budden podcast where they were talking about like Lotto's number one. And they were talking about, uh, they were talking about the, the big three right now is Nikki, Doja, and Lotto. And I'm like, honestly, to me, we got to be honest. Well, this is how I feel. So it's not a we thing. It's a me thing. Didn't like Meg's album. Didn't like Ice's album. JT's album was really good. But she's she's still climbing up her yeah. solo. Yeah. You know, era and Cardi not putting music out. So like right now, like if Nikki is number one, uh, undeniable, it's been that way for <laughs> forever. Since we were kids. <laughs> the, the Doja Cat, I, I'd put number two. You know, she obviously is pop leaning, but she just dropped a really oh, good rap album. Rap really she can well. rap her ass off. Like it's undeniable. Like yeah. you know, people don't people may not like Doja, but the music is you, you can't deny it. Lotto will be my number three. Like right now, Lotto will be my number three. I know people put Sexy Red up high. She's hot right now, but like. Well, we have to see Sexy Red sustain over a few years. What do you, what do you think about Glorilla? Glorilla's dope. She, she's super hot right now, but she kind of, this is her comeback because, like, uh, she had a year where she was like, yeah, I, 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 right. I, I like this Glorilla a lot right now. She's cooking. She's yeah. cooking. She's cooking. But I think for me, just looking at Lotto's album in 2022, 777, mm. her singles, her features, like, most things she touches, she goes crazy. Yeah. So yeah. she's she's my number three if we were to do a ranking of, you know, all the women. That's right respectable. Now. Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to think if anyone else can go like before her, but I, I, I wouldn't. But we're do talking it. about like um like their performance, right? Like the year that they've been having or I'm just... I, I'm just like this is my ranking of you your your music lately, your popularity. <laughs> numbers is where it get tri- gets tricky because Lotto's predicted to do like 30 something and Doja's last album shit. was whatever. Here's I, the thing though because I always see with a lot of t- a lot of times um, people put May in, in, in their three. Yep. And because you could also put the the argument of like all right, Doja, Meg, they both did arena, sold out arena tours. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know necessarily where Lotto is at with that just yet. Yeah. I don't think she's toured yet. Yeah. I'm, so, like, so you know, there's, I, I know that there's, that comes with a lot of it too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. To see even how that goes, where people can put the overall thing with them and stuff. But mm-hmm. yeah, I, I see Meg a lot, like that, that name a lot. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, and she's, that Mamushi song is going crazy. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It is. She it's just like put the video interna- out, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah the video looks It's looked an international fine. hit. I mean, the video looked. <laughs> 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 but, but no, I, 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 I got to give her credit for that. That song's going crazy. Um, no. Overall, yeah. But I think Meg is always going to be in the conversation just because her personality and her brand is so big. Yeah. Like, and her cultural uh, impact, too. Like yeah. The hotties. Yeah. Hot girl like, summer. Absolutely. Literally every other day you see a girl saying, like, hot girl something in their captions because of because of Meg. Meg. So mm-hmm. you got, got to give a lot of credit for there. But I, I think when you really factor and prioritize the musicality in the rankings of it, she falls for me. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I got to give a lot of credit to Lotto, man. Like, she's... um. She's cooking. She's cooking. She really wants it. I watched her interview with Ebro, the Apple Music one. It's like a good, like, 25-minute interview. And just, like, the way she thinks about music, the way she approaches it, um, she wants to get into production now. Like, that's her next uh, level nice. up. And so I, I think that'll be even uh, even greater for her. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a fan. I'm not going to go front. Like, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm a I spice me to leave her alone. <laughs> it's just, she has some bars for her on yeah. this album, dude. She said, like, uh, ice is just water when it melts. Yeah. Um, I think it was Brokey where she was like, these girls don't want it with me. Like, something like... Oh. Yeah, I don't <laughs> think she do either. If, and I if, said that. If, I mean, well, we said it before the album came out. But, but if you put these albums side to side, it's, it's, it's one that's a clear, you know, tomato, tomato, and one that's a <laughs> need that. <laughs> Bring me seconds. I need that. So... You know, um, shout out to Lotto, man. We really enjoyed it. Uh, also, the funny enough, the outro, shout out to me. She performed at the BET Awards. 
Yeah. Um, and so that was the, the sequencing also. I, I, we didn't get to touch on that, the sequencing of it. Like starting with Georgia Peach, which is what uh, my guy Cam called the, the woman's version of Drake, Virginia Beach, but whatever. <laughs> it, it works still. No, it worked. People are so annoying. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to me at the end. Like, Hearing her get into storytelling, introspection, more backpack type rapping, because she be floating over over these trap beats, she be killing them. But hearing her get into that bag is like, yeah, you got that too, like, yeah. what the fuck? Like, oh, you can rap, yeah, like it's incredible. So yeah, the big fan of Sugar Honey Ice Tea. It'll probably land on my top ten list for the for the end of the year. Um, so yeah, major major shout out to her. And finally, the man who just always finds a way to be the topic of conversation, whether it's this podcast, whether it's Elliot Wilson's Twitter, whether it's Joe <laughs> Budden podcast, whether it's all these discords and Reddit and all that shit. Uh, last week, people discovered Drake's burner Instagram account, uh, Plot Twist, with multiple T's at the end of Plot and Twist. Um, and he's been posting random clips, stuff, all that, blah, blah, blah. And then I think it was like Tuesday where he posts three songs. Uh, it's up. With Thug and Savage, Blue Green Red, Housekeeping Nose with Lotto. And then he drops the 100 Gigs website, where you see literally 100 gigs of content, unreleased footage from tours, um, music videos, studio sessions, all that. So, what was, what, what was your favorite thing that you saw in the 100 gigabyte dump? Honestly, I'm tired of Drake right now. <laughs> I'm, I'm, and I love him mm -hmm. real bad, mm -hmm. but I just couldn't. You know, I was playing it for my mama barbecue. Mm -hmm. I was not sitting through that shit at all. Like, mm -hmm. but um, when I did see the um songs appear on streaming afterwards, mm -hmm. I'm like, you okay, tapped in. you tapped in. I'm like, all right, he got a little lashing. Mm -hmm. He they was like, uh, uh, we gotta recoup some of that shit. And he could have like held off on the lotto stuff, cause like now you add an ammo to the claims that people are like, you see, uh huh, what? you definitely are writing for her. Ah, gotcha. it's like you could have held off on that real quick, but um, it was it was a good look for her around her album time, though I think. Yeah, definitely got people buzzing, but you know everyone loves nostalgia, mm -hmm. and you know adding all those things that the BTS for songs that people love. And, you know, the the alternate covers and <laughs> what did have me weak was him blowing the shit out that damn hookah. <laughs> when he was in the studio with his mom. Yeah. She was hitting it too. <laughs> she was hitting that shit. I'm like, okay, so I'm sure. <laughs> but, yeah, I'm going I'm to take my time to get around to that because mm. I'm like 100 gigs. Yeah. I cannot. Like, if I was younger, I would have been on it mm -hmm. like all my friends would have came to me for the spark notes but yeah, mm -mm. yeah I, I ain't watching all that i don't got the, i don't got the time to watch all of that uh i yeah. think it was a great pr move uh because think about it. it's like what you said is a is everybody loves nostalgia so if you're gonna go back and listen to it, watch all those videos you know how many people called me and texted me going like yo did you watch this or this 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 <laughs> i'm like no right but, <laughs> <laughs> listen like I've seen the clips that come up on on social media and yeah. stuff, but it's like I think that's a great PR move. At yeah. the end of the day, you got you want to get good gracious with the people, no matter what. Drake is gonna be number one, yeah. whether Wasn't we like it or move? not. That was, was, was a good move. Yeah, it was nobody Brilliant. had anything negative to say about. I mean, that. even I, the people who don't like him on I social saw media. People saying negative there things. were some people who Listen, had negative things to say. There's people. I don't want to say their name right now, but there's people who are very known. I'm not doing that. <laughs> that. That are very known on social media to not like Drake, mm -hmm. and they were bigging up that. That's movie. facts. No, absolutely, absolutely. We could say those names after this whole thing, okay. but I'm by me. <laughs> there was definitely those people who were doing that, and I seen it. Yeah, yeah. And mm -hmm. I was like, yeah. okay, even the vocal people who vocally do not like Drake, mm -hmm. they're going like, oh, that was a good move. That was like, yeah. I can't even complain at that. Yeah. But <sighs> the, 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 there was an annoying group of people who were like, he should have put all of it into a documentary rather than giving it I'm to sure us the plan. in folders. But my thing That'd is, cool too. If, if you want a Drake documentary, yeah, uh, you want a documentary of a 15-year career, everyone has a different favorite Drake era. Yeah. So he's not going to be able to cover every, like, uh, unless you want a three to four hour documentary, he's not going to be able to give you enough of the era that you love. So everyone's mm -hmm. gonna complain about the documentary anyways. Yeah. So I thought it was brilliant to just give people everything, let them decide what they wanted. You see all the already YouTube compilations of the take care studio sessions. Nothing was the same studio sessions. Like people are breaking it down themselves and yeah. making it um 
So I also haven't gone through the entire website because that would just be insane. I thought you were. <laughs> no, absolutely I not. thought you were going to say, yeah, <laughs> y'all, no. so I did it. <laughs> well, re- respect me. Have, have some respect for me. <laughs> like I, I know that's your boy. The, the, I, I, I did go through a good amount of it, but it was just like after a while, like, bro, I don't really care to like. The, 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 there was <laughs> some mean? video of him just driving down the highway in Miami. I was like, bro, I don't care about this. <laughs> no, for real. Like, g- give me the studio sessions. Give me the behind the scenes of the, of the music video shoots. It was cool to see him shooting like the fake Tiny Desk for her loss and... Um, the fake um Saturday Night Live performance, like yeah. stuff like that, was cool. Hearing him at forty, just going back, like you know, seeing seeing how meticulous Drake is with the the production of the music, because forty has said that, but we haven't seen it. So seeing Drake be, be like, yeah, yo, take those hi hats off, or yo, know, like you know, like well, whatever, just all these terms, I don't even know. It was, <laughs> it, it was cool to see him work in that way. I um, saw that clip. He was uh, uh, one of them was with One Dance. Yeah, I think he was doing it for. Yeah, and like. Messing well, around with it, I was like, "Oh, this is this is really cool." Yeah, to, yeah. Like, see you that know what side. He was of talking about, it was dope. Yeah. It was dope, and you know, and I think you know, again, we wouldn't know this if we've never seen it, and so then it's easy to make the the OVO dungeon narrative. Everyone's doing everything for him, but he yeah. does have a hand in the music. So, um, I thought it was cool to to see that. As far as like the the PR move of it all, mm. I also thought that was a, a really good PR move because. Uh, Wayno did put out a clip around the time the 100 gigabytes came out and he was like, you know, this new Drake with the braids, like just everything he's been doing lately. Like we don't, we don't know who this guy is. Like he's, he's just this different character and you know, there are fans who stick by it. They, they still like the music, all that. But the guy that we once knew who said, diss me, you'll never hear or or apply for it. Mm -hmm. Or just like, didn't take this adversarial stance towards women sometimes or all these other things like you know that's that's he's different and people grow people change but yeah. this p- give, putting all this out was a good way to remind people of the guy that they loved in the in 2011 in 2013 even in 2015 mm-hmm. um and i think i think this whole experience hopefully has shown him like you know i might have been doing a little too much i might have felt that i was infallible and gone a little too far in you know like certain lines on her loss or just like certain things that I've done. And so I'm, I'm, I feel like it's indicative of some, some come to Jesus moment where he's like, all right, I, I kind of got to, and you know, he's never going to recapture the take care or nothing was the same era, but you know, he's, he's at least recognizing, it feels like he's recognizing like, guy. Right, like I, I was wilding. Like, like, let, let me stop wilding. Let me get my shit together. How'd you feel? That's about what it feels songs? like. Uh, yeah. It feel, I didn't it feels get like that. that. It feels like that. What'd you get? Drake likes to be liked, and the mm. shit ain't hitting no more. What? Well, well, it's it's just two pronged. Like, it's it's like we said. This this is a PR move. Like, it's it's undeniable. This is strategy. This wasn't just some generous here niggas. Like, here take all this. Like, it was clearly to fix his image. But like, both can be achieved. Where he's kind of trying to show people like, yo, I'm recognizing what's up. Like, and I'm I'm changing up. But also, I'm gonna try to manipulate y'all or con- or whatever the word is manipulate sounds a little crazy like <laughs> nah, I'm, I'm, I think it's accurate. I'm, I'm going to try to influence you guys to remember why you love me and so when i come out with an album this year which it seems like he might do you know it's it's more it's better received than if it was a month ago and you know we didn't have this yeah i don't so. think it's oversaturation like no. this is not music i mean it was three songs mm. yeah i mean i said this earlier i, I love drake but I think it's. I think it would be. It would hit much harder if you have. If he has everybody missing for a little while. For sure. Agree. Absolutely. He I can think benefit that, from a break. For, yeah. for real. I think it would be really cool because it's just like look at every time Kendrick dropped, or even Cole. Like even though Cole was on those feature runs and stuff like that, mm-hmm. but like every time there was an album involved or anything like that, it was that much bigger of a deal. Like and yeah. don't get me wrong, it's a big deal every time Drake dropped. But like, it's like. I feel like it would do like numbers like how Views was doing, mm-hmm. where it's like yo everybody wants to because you haven't heard from him in a while. Exactly. I think it's it's good to be missed sometimes and stuff. Absolutely. But with that being said, I like the records that he dropped. Mm-hmm. I thought it was dope. I thought the it's up record with with uh, Thug and Twenty One Savage. It was. I, I didn't know 21 Savage was on the song, so mm-hmm. even listening to it, I'm like, oh, this is yeah. hard. It's, like, it's one of the best verses I've heard in, in a while. That was I, I had a good time with it. That yeah. was my favorite one out of the three, mm-hmm. um, but that's that song definitely for sure. Yeah, yeah. I, I I mean, I agree. Well, we've said it on the on this pod multiple yeah. times. Like, Drake would benefit from a break. 
we just know that he's not capable of of doing it. I, yeah. it, it really feels yeah. like he, it's like he's down by five with a minute left, <laughs> and it's like you know, and like he's he's he he's the quarterback. He's he, he's 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 on like a one minute drill. And he's like trying to rush to score a touchdown before the time expires. And like time is not gonna expire for him. It's like, wild. I under with you just saying that it kind of clicked to me in a certain way because like, all right, for example, I was just on a a, a cruise to Bermuda mm-hmm. uh maybe two weeks ago or something like that. A week and a half, whatever. But like while I'm everybody kept asking me, they're like, yo, were you able to relax while you out there and stuff like that? That's a good question. And I I wasn't. Why not? Because I'm sick in the head. Like, I really, <laughs> like, I'm really thinking about, like, my fiance could go take a shower. I'm on the phone with, like, one of the homies, like, yo, yeah, send this song over right now and all mm-hmm. this stuff. And I'm thinking to myself of, like, damn, I'm really thinking about all of this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so that's me at this point of my life. Yeah. That's why there's only four places that could really remove me from all of this. And this is why I value these places so much. Uh, this is a side note, but one is a uh, movie theater, mm-hmm. uh, comedy cellar, um, Disney World, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, Knicks games in mm-hmm. Madison Square Garden. <laughs> okay. That's it. Those you are the only. In the Knicks game. Yeah, those <laughs> are the only. <laughs> Be emotional. <laughs> yeah, those are the only things that kind of get me away from my phone completely. Yeah, That's and what's up. I think it's because of the fact that it's like a like, you know, I'm I was escaping reality. Right. I could be in another part of this world right now, but reality is still there because it's the life that we're living. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When I'm in these places, I'm not thinking about nothing else. Yeah. You're really disconnected. Exactly. So yeah. if I'm thinking like this at this point, imagine what he's thinking yeah. from a break that yeah. he don't even he don't even want to take a break because if he is taking a break, he's probably not even thinking about break. He's thinking about oh, but how do we stay on top? How do we do this? How yeah. do we do that? And yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I'm sick in the head, so I could only imagine like what he's thinking. He hasn't he hasn't experienced not being on top it, in over a decade. Yeah. So, like his whole we never seen that whole yeah. career. Yeah, it's so crazy. he's yeah. he's scrambling to maintain it. You mm-hmm. know, like again, even with the pusher thing, like yeah, he lost, but that summer it was one no of the biggest quote. summers ever. No, I'm yeah, no, he lost. Yeah, he, I'm sorry, <laughs> this is just a force of habit. <laughs> he lost, uh-huh. <laughs> but he also had one of his biggest music years ever. Like yeah. right after that, like yeah. that. That motivated him to do it. Exactly. And, you know, we said he's been trying to recreate that, but he hasn't been making the best moves. And he also doesn't have an album this summer. Like, Scorpion... That's crazy. Scorpion was at a perfect time. Like, you know, he did Duppy, Story of Adidon came out. Three weeks later, he dropped Scorpion. And he also had two singles before that that were cooking crazy. He doesn't have singles that are going crazy right now. He doesn't have an album coming this year. So he's trying to repair his image and maintain his spot without the proper foundation to do it. Like, all these features, you like them or not, they're, they're not getting it done. And, like, that's the other thing is with with the songs, people said, damn, you're proving Kendrick right. Like, you're, 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 you're running back to Atlanta. Was he supposed to change his formula because, like, a, a nigga <laughs> called him out on it? Like, is, y- 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 y'all really don't want to hear Drake and Thug ever again? Like, y- y- y'all God. sure? Yeah. Are y- y'all sure? Like, Drake and 21 have been super close the last couple of years. Yeah. Drake will be like, hey, 21, I'm dropping you like, uh, like, uh, like uh, what's his name in Toy Story? Um, a- Andy? A- like, Andy. Like, 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 Andy drop, dropped uh, Woody. I don't know. <laughs> like, no, he's not going to do that. Like, like if anything, he's, he's going to go back to them and try to make the best shit he's ever made. And these are definitely not the best Atlanta collaborations he's ever done. Yeah, but I did really like uh, It's Up. I love housekeeping knows. I'm not gonna front like that. That's like Rich Baby Daddy Part Two to me. Mm. I love Rich Baby Daddy. I, I I haven't had a chance to rant about my love for Rich Baby Daddy on this podcast, Hands but I love. You feel me? That's that's my shit. <laughs> and so housekeeping knows like it was it was like right up that that alley. Lotto sounds great on it. Um, I thought it was a good strategic move for her. And then Blue Green Red was good. I think he's made better Afro house type stuff, but it was mm. it was it was cool. Um. And it was funny to me that that was the song where he's responding to meet the Grams on like a dance party <laughs> bop, like like if like certain lines he's like, "Tell my father I made all these fortunes." Like, how many summers did I run? Like ten. That's a bar at um, Mustard because he's got his ten yeah, summers, summers label. Yeah. Like like all these different lines. I'm like, Drake is a sicko for using this party song where niggas not gonna really pay attention to the lyrics to respond to like give the most direct response to meet the grams it's absolutely hilarious but yeah man there's been a lot of narratives about all this because uh the night before the songs hit streaming he posted the screenshot of um basically the songs being like struck for uh struck on instagram because he posted them um as like 
audio files and they were under the property of UMG. And now it's this narrative of like, yo, Drake is a slave to his label. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like UMG on his ass. You and granted, like the the, the nigga signed for four hundred million dollars. So that they want to recoup, I get it. Absolutely. Like but the this is like different for me. It, um so people were like treating these like these were like his normal leaks where like the songs come out, but like he directly put these out, like on his Finsta on the website it's not it's not like vital where vital was just circulating the internet and we just found it like mm-hmm. he 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 to me what i always interpreted it as the moment 100 gigs came out i thought they were gonna hit streaming eventually like this seemed like yeah. a rollout to me yeah. mm-hmm. it, it didn't seem like he was just giving music away for free like he he never does this and if he does it goes to soundcloud correct he puts his lucy's on soundcloud or he puts them directly on streaming so him doing this yeah maybe it was to test the waters and see how people responded but it, i was always under the impression that they were going to come out on streaming anyways so when i saw that i was like okay bet like we're about to get these thursday night they end up coming out friday night saturday morning whatever but people acting like oh shit drake tried to leak th- this music his label said nah give me that and then they put it out themselves i was like i, I don't i don't think that's how, how that happened or he like, could have did it so that they could purposely put it on streaming services because we don't really know like the ins and outs of his deal absolutely and like how meant how like how much projects he owed them exactly so they probably like nah this shit don't count right and he's like nah we gonna make it count mm-hmm. and and that's the other thing and we've said it so many times in this show be a fucking fan right all these niggas trying to tell us yo drake yo drake's deal how, how you know <laughs> were you there sign the contract word like you you, you gotta see in your beginner law class i want to hear shit about what you was doing <laughs> i want to hear shit about what you know about contracts deals labels like <laughs> it, it's just it's so annoying it's it is the internet has been more insufferable than like ever before. Seriously, and it's giving too many people voices, bro. Oh my That's god, what it is. and oh they don't be god. smart. They yeah, they don't. don't. They don't. Like they be yo, saying shit. <laughs> it's a lot of people who I, some people who I respect, some who I don't give a fuck about, who was just saying nonsense this week, and it took me everything to just not become a keyboard warrior and call niggas stupid. But sometimes you gotta call <laughs> niggas stupid, yo. Man. A lot of stupid takes I've seen. A lot a lot of a lot of stupid Mercury's takes. Mercury's in retrograde. So if you're an air sign, it's avoid disagreement. <sighs> it it was it was just bad. But and like and it's just so interesting to see people go like all galaxy brain over something that's pretty simple. He gave us all this unreleased footage, he gave us three new songs, and now it's leading into conversations about terms of contracts and just all this <laughs> other shit and Kendrick was right oh, I'm so sick of niggas bro I'm so so uh, sick of them but. that always makes me laugh though I can't front what when they always bring up Kendrick bro I mean, and <laughs> so it's, funny and, and it's, just, it's just a reality and then Kendrick leads to push too like I, I don't know if you noticed that during the entire beef push kept getting brought up yeah. And like, I was like, bro. Let me bro, see you push it tea. Yeah, like, I'm like, <laughs> this is a great line. I can't throw that. Yeah. <laughs> especially especially the way up. he says it. The yeah. way he says it, too. Like, he got ate up. Yeah. But, um, again, music was cool to me. It was cool to see the footage. I haven't seen all of it. I won't see all of it. Um, but also, <laughs> He's lying. But also. <laughs> I don't believe him. <laughs> he, he, he fed all these aggregation accounts. Like, you, like, you know those niggas who, like. Who like like for example like Lotto will post a trailer for her for her album mm-hmm. and then all these accounts are resharing the, the trailer like oh Lotto just ate uh, you know blah, blah blah all that like all these aggregation accounts the, the, they ate with this stuff like it's like six different ones putting up the nothing was the same studio sessions yeah. and Drake talking about Jay Z and he all put that. them to so work hopefully Elon Musk pays y'all some decent money for all this all this <laughs> free work that y'all doing because Elliot Wilson too yeah oh my god <laughs> Elliot. Make sure like, you spell it right. Okay. <laughs> Two T. Okay. I'm not gonna front. So, <laughs> somebody cooked him. Um, they they called him Elliot with one T, and then he quoted it and said Elliot two T's, and the nigga spelled. Uh, he called him. Um, I think he called him like stupid with two T's or like, or like or idiot. Or idiot, idiot, yes, idiot. He, he said idiot with two T's at the end. So he he kind of cooked him. He cooked him. That's some me shit. That's an ebony clock. That, it was it was very clever. I, I, I was laughing hard. I was laughing hard. But yeah, man. He and you know, I all respect to Elliot for what he does, but the way he's been like crashing out over Drake lately. It's, it's 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 been it's been a little much. It's not only over Drake. I mean, yeah, it's, he's it's a been lot. crashing out kind of period in general. Yeah. Yeah, like the, the, I'm not the, the sure. The Charlemagne if, stuff. 
Yeah, mm-hmm. even with the Nikki stuff. Remember when she's like, if you take Jay-Z's dick out your mouth for mm-hmm. one second. Yeah. Like, he has been, like, on, like, his digital presence has grown mm-hmm. a lot lately. And I haven't really been seeing, like, Rap Radar, like, title produce Rap Radar. They, they haven't it's done been a lot that. of, like, old clips. Yeah. So, and I don't think I've seen it in his bio either, mm-hmm. so... Yeah, now he's um he's working at uh, Upper Rocks and DX. He's the editorial director there, and so they have the that's show. A, that's aligned with his brand. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so they got the show, the bigger picture with DJ Head and Jeremy Het. Um, and yeah, I mean most of the episodes have just been them talking about Drake and Kendrick. Like, <laughs> a- every single episode is Drake and Kendrick stuff. I'm like, yo, at least we switch it up. Yeah, like you know, <laughs> we, we try to. Like I feel like we we cover stuff when it's like relevant enough to talk about i'm not just gonna pull shit out of the air like yo like let's rank each beat throughout the beef or let's let's do this or like you know i feel like if something relevant comes up we'll talk about it there's a lot of times i don't want to talk about it at all but um i do eventually want us to have the conversation about like new hip-hop media because that's what like uh, rob markman did a great video about the ellie and charlemagne beef and what it means on a larger scale like he didn't really focus too much on their back and forth but just new age hip hop media and how yeah. like journalists ha- are becoming personalities and Elliot to to me the way I perceive how he's been operating is like he's 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 obviously older he's established he's got a great resume but he still wants to compete with these new people who are coming up and kind of benefiting from the advancements in technology and all that mm-hmm. and trying to remind young niggas like yo I'm the goat I run this shit and I'm just like you know I'm all for affirming yourself but I feel like. You should let other people say that about you. Correct. And and you've got the resume for people. Like people want to celebrate you. Like you are one of the one of the people people look up to. Yeah. But the way you've been operating makes niggas not want to give you that credit. Like a- anytime I see a tweet, a clip, I'm just like, oh my god, this nigga won't stop, bro. Like I mean, but and playing devil's advocate, who when you say you he is the one that we are looking up to, who's looking up to him? I do feel like there is a like these young people don't know him. Oh, absolutely, for real. absolutely. It's and it's people within his class. Like I, I feel like I'm like, I don't know what I would call my generation, but I'm part of a generation. There's a generation a- ahead of me, and there's Elliot's generation. Yeah, and I feel like the generation ahead of me looks up to Elliot. Yeah. When I was coming up in the space, I knew about him. I respected him. I would watch the Rap Raider interviews. I wouldn't necessarily say he was a hero of mine, but he was someone who I recognized, like him, the the Rob Markmans, mm-hmm. the the Sways, the the Angie Martinez. We go on and on with names. Um, but yeah, I feel like even within like like the, the class behind me, yeah, they, they don't care. They don't, and it doesn't feel good getting pushed out of something that you consider yourself like a pioneer. But you have to, like, you have to step aside, and and you have to invest. You have to invest in the next person up, like like you have to give that cosign. Exactly, I would say you guys address that elephant in the room because a lot of times when they don't have that longevity, it's because they kept their cards close to their chest and they didn't like you know. Up, empower the next generation. Yeah, like, that's the way to go. Hope yeah. taught us that. Wayne taught us that. Mm-hmm. Like that is the way to go. Like he's talked down on Kai Sanad. He's talked down on Lil yeah. Yachty and his podcast. He's hey, talked I down like on that. you know, but Bobby Altoff. Like he, you got to invest. You, you gotta, you gotta put somebody on. Yeah, like if you forward. don't like them, then who do you like? Sorry, I, I didn't mean to cut you off, Ima. No, I said I didn't like that. I didn't like that he was doing that. I think yeah. that's corny. Yeah, because it's like there's a lot of people. How do you expect things to grow if you just want to keep it with just with just you? Because mm-hmm. you know, I'm just even you know to see how it was like me even growing up seeing I, I would see the Rob Markmans, I would see Wayno mm-hmm. even do that to see Joe Budden do what he was doing. Mm-hmm. Uh, we grew. I, I grew up during a time where academics was really you know whether people like him or not, he was doing a lot mm-hmm. for people to even speak on it. Yeah. Um, and to see now, like, how gay P were on the radar or, like, what Nyla's doing, mm-hmm. Nyla Simone, where we need to talk, like, it's been cool to even see that. Even with what y'all doing and stuff. Like, yeah. that's, you know, things got to get pushed forward as much as you possibly can. Mm-hmm. And sometimes when you become, when you when you come off as bitter and stuff, you know, people, more, more and more, people don't even want to associate with you and stuff like that. So Yeah. Yeah. But when when we do have that combo, it's a lot of stones to unturn because it's it's really about how social media is just blurring the lines. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because Elliot does have a lane. I just don't think he knows how to like um create it in a digital landscape. Yeah. So Yeah. It's it sounds like bitter old man ye yelling at the sky. <laughs> and it's like you have a you have a reputable journalist background. Yeah. Like 
what it was two years ago he, he wrote the J, the GQ story on Future and it was like that I was that was the it. talk of that week yeah. like everyone loved that shit it was like well not everyone we have to admit like we're talking you're talking about industry yeah colleagues. industry people yeah 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 but during his era like when there was only the Source magazine and Hot ninety seven yeah. like everyone was talking about it mm-hmm. so to only have like such like a small subgenre of people talking about it and it, it not making a cultural impact the way it used to i can see that you know hurting him yeah, it's tough man you gotta have that, <laughs> you gotta have that self-awareness to recognize when when your time is up like i don't know for me personally i love even at i'm, I'm 29 still i've I have ways to go when people ask me questions and ask me for advice and ask me to connect with someone i love doing that shit i love putting someone on because it's not competition for me like like you, you're clearly you know some steps behind me but even if you were trying to get to where i'm at that's cool it just motivates me more like yeah. but it's not, it, it don't, don't got to be some negative adversarial thing where i try to tear your platform down like yeah. that's that's the whack shit i mean there are some whack platforms that we should tear down in media <laughs> but i i think the people who elliot's has spoken negatively of right the generation behind me looks up to the, the, they they enjoy the yachty podcast they enjoy kai sanat and it's just like bro if it's not for you it's not for you and kai yeah. didn't ask for this it yeah. kind of just happened he was streaming yeah, yeah. like playing video <laughs> games granted he's he's not he's not that great at video games but but, but he's funny he's <laughs> oh, funny he, kai, he's not good at video no, games he's not, he's not good at all <laughs> <laughs> if you struggle if you struggle i thought he was at least nice but but, but he's funny like kai's fun. like even the mm-hmm. clips i see i don't watch his streams but the clips i see it's enjoyable and i recognize yeah, charisma hey, Right, exactly. Yeah. Like Riz, as, as the kids say. Riz, yeah. you got, got that, a lot of they ate that slang w up. W Riz. <laughs> yep, they ate that slang up. <laughs> lots, lots of aura. <laughs> but, <laughs> no, I, <laughs> did you been hanging around the kids? At, look, <laughs> look at, if y'all look at Joe and y'all said that, he just went like, he knows I hate that word. So. What, Riz? Aura? No, aura. It's, aura? It, you know, yeah. I'm not going to front. It is annoying. Like, yeah. <laughs> the, the, the day aura entered like actual basketball analysis, is like it's it's one of the worst things ever. Like niggas, like yeah, Anthony Edwards, he he got a jump shot, he could defend, he got so much or Whoa, bro, come on now, come on, bro. That sounds a bit odd, and you know I don't watch that shit. It's nuts, right? Like it's nuts. What? Like you know you can have certain intangibles, but aura, like what the fuck does aura bring to the court? <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great conversation we got into oh, man. as a result of Drake and the 100 gigabyte dump. Um, quickly uh, for our lunch break, the Olympics are going on. Um, I know that Will, uh, shout out to you, Will. Will's been enjoying watching. I really haven't watched the Olympics too much, but I have been tapping into the basketball. And this weekend we saw the men's and the women's basketball teams bring home the gold. Again, I've never been so patriotic. America, flag, <laughs> my nigga. Oh, all that shit. Like, like we're here. America the beautiful <laughs> until the election comes and it's going to be hell. But yes. um, I really enjoy watching the game. Steph Curry is a fucking maniac. Yeah. He's, still? Yeah. Oh, still. Yeah. Still. I love to hear that. Still. It's, I, I'm, I'm not going to front. I, I've been a Steph Curry hater for a while. It was fun as hell rooting for him. Like, having the experience of rooting for him, I'm like, damn, this is what the Warriors fans got to do for the last 10 years? <laughs> like, yeah, I was having fun because I'm, 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 I'm a yeah. Bron guy. Okay. But why can't you like both? Because he's loyal. No, nah, there's I mean, loyalty. Because I mean, I'm I'm very loyal to the, to to, to Knicks. the Knicks. Like very like you gotta I watch, be a loyal. Person. I got I watch every game like in the okay. studio. Like it's playing everywhere I'm at. Say that it's it's, it's yeah. hard to give credit to a guy who's beating my guy three times in the finals. Like it just it stings. I I, I take it personally. Okay, I take it. Personally. I understand. I understand. But man, seeing them play together, it yeah. made, it, it made me wish like they could have linked up when they were you know. Younger, and I mean, even now, if Steph Curry came to the Lakers now, I'd be hyped. That'd be lit. All the Lakers fans want that, right? Then now. you add in KD. You know, Devin Booker was doing his thing. Embiid was shaky at, at, at first, but he 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 ended up playing pretty well. AD mm-hmm. locking up Wemby. It was it was just beautiful to see, man. Especially the the game before that against Serbia, where, where they had to come back because they was down like what, like sixteen at the half. That was the first game I saw of the Olympics. That's just I haven't crazy. been able to catch anything. And then when that game was on, I mm-hmm. I, uh, I so happened to be watching that one. Yeah, and I was like. What, what, what's going on right now? Yeah. Are we washed or something like bro, that? It, it, it looks shaky, bro. Uh, Jokic, but Bogdanovich, the other nigga. Stuff. They was cooking. <laughs> Yo, but, but that, I was like, as right. soon as he did that to Melo, I was like, you fucked up, white boy. Yeah. You fucked up. <laughs> yeah. And, then, and then, then they turned it around, but it was beautiful to see, man. I saw I saw Anthony Edwards saying on, on Instagram Live, he was like, yeah, Curry, Curry showed up three days ago, but we have him here now. <laughs> <Yeah>. oh. <laughs> <laughs> it took him some time to heat up, but, but when that nigga heated up, he, uh, there was oh, no. Nah, he, 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 yeah, he's, an, no he's another, off. he's another, I, yeah, he's special. Yeah. Absolutely. You got to give him his credit. 
um, and the women's team too. The, the their final was on Sunday. Um, really, really physical game against France. Mm-hmm. Um, Clea Copper, incredible. Wait, um, they were going against France too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The men and women faced France in the finals. Yeah, so France, we gave France hell in Paris. That sounds like some story, <laughs> like some fantasy. Yeah, stuff. Like, like niggas crazy. was niggas was in Paris while. Yeah, <laughs> like, it was it was bad. It was bad. But uh, yeah, the, the women ended up winning. I think by like one point. Damn. Um, yeah, one point. It was. I even get to catch tight. that one. I was tight. It was tight. Very physical game. Pretty sloppy. A lot of missed buckets. Mm-hmm. But Clea Copper, Asia Wilson, of course, uh, Sabrina Onescu, Brianna Stewart, they were all just all great. So shout out to America for bringing it home, man. I felt so American this weekend. I <laughs> went from a football game to watching, you know, the Olympics. Um, <laughs> drinking some some ice cold lemonade. I just I, I just I just felt like a. F- felt like a patriot, so <laughs> we're here, man. Shout out to America. Um, so uh, have, have you been watching any Olympics, Miss Two Bs? No, no. You mm-hmm. you wasn't watching some like uh, I'm trying to think what you'd be interested in. The 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 the, the break dancing. You ain't watched the break dancing. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, they need to call Jada Kiss next year. <laughs> Cause what? <laughs> <laughs> that shit I saw the clips online yeah, I'm just like <laughs> I, I saw some nonsense <laughs> Alright I'm gonna mind my business It was a busy ass weekend I had to take care Of my Leo queen So yeah. she had me occupied Nah it was It was one shorty out there Breakdancing who looked like me When I was like Six, year, six years old At the parties <laughs> Thinking like, I was mommy, breakdancing Like mommy look Mommy look <laughs> And then you do some bullshit It was bad It was bad <laughs> But Salute to, to America. Um, again, I'm, I'm going to enjoy this before shit gets terrible around here, which will probably be very soon. <laughs> Literally, as we speak, or no, in five minutes, Donald Trump is doing a live interview on X with Elon Musk. Um, Interesting. Like, he <sighs> like he hasn't been on Twitter in, like, over That's what I'm three saying. years. And Elon Musk welcomed him back to do a live interview. Them niggas are scrambling. They, they, they recognize Kamala doing her thing. Kamala's cooking. Their campaign is shitty as hell and mm-hmm. desperate. It's yeah. just Kamala's... Really doing her thing. I'm Ooh, impressed. Yeah, she's putting that pressure on. So, yeah. Um, obviously, by the time I hear this, the interview will be over. But um, <laughs> if by some way you can hack us and hear us live, don't listen to that shit. <laughs> 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 Anyways, let's get into uh, an ad read. So, this week's episode and some forthcoming episodes will be sponsored by Fine Wine Series. Have you heard about the Fine Wine Series Festival? Well, this year, they're back with their biggest festival to date, September 14th. At City Field, home of the New York Mets, dive into a three-hour unlimited wine tasting, enjoy New York's best DJs curating immaculate R&B vibes, and did we mention the dress theme? Liquid Fantasy. Save the date, book your flight, step into a world where wine, music, fashion, and black excellence blend into the ultimate celebration. Get ready to make memories that will last a lifetime. Tickets are available at finewineseries.com, so make sure you tap in. A ten fine wine. I'll be seeing the pictures all over Instagram. People be dressed up to the nines. Joints be looking beautiful. But brothers be dapper. The wine be looking good. The vibes be looking good. The the dance and all that. So you might see me out there September fourteenth at City Field. You know, dressed up. You know, I might I, I might pull up in a. I don't even know yet, but just just, <laughs> just just you'll see. But just know, shout out to the fine wine family. And again, finewineseries dot com to get tickets for their festival at City Field September fourteenth. The moment we've all been waiting for, uh, we have an incredible guest in the building, so we're going to get into an interview uh, for him. But got a quick rapid-fire game for you, so I'm, I'm, I'm just going to say a phrase, and you're going to just answer real quickly. You ready? All right, let's go. You ready? Okay. I call this, calling this Iman's ID, so you're going to get to know <laughs> the identity of Iman. So, yeah. favorite food? Favorite food? Mm-hmm. Pizza. Okay. Do you have specific toppings? or uh, Pepperoni. I got specific places too. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Classic. Okay. Yeah. Right. We'll, we'll, we'll get into that. Right. Favorite alcohol? I don't drink. Respect. Yeah, water. All right. There <laughs> we go. There we go. Favorite clothing brand? Rosedale, New York. Mine. Mm, okay. Good, good plug. Rosedale, New York. Let's tap into <laughs> that. Favorite album of all time? 808s and Heartbreaks by Kanye West. A lot. I feel like a lot of music artists. Yeah, it's always something Kanye. Yeah, which, we, we it makes sense. We can get into that. Yeah, I, yeah, I would love to. Favorite artist? Uh, I have three. Okay, give them all. Well, I got a top five, but like, duh. <laughs> my three, I actually have a top ten. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my three, my three is uh Lil Wayne, J Cole, and Kanye West and Jay Z. But like, it kind of goes like. Mm, okay. Okay. Fifth is the locks. But, there we go. Favorite bar you've ever spit? 
come back to me. Our mom does that. Amen, he he amen. does that. Yeah, come back to me because. There's now you got me going through the roller decks of like <laughs> you've, you've spit quite a lot of bars since uh, yeah. 2016 and probably before then. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'll, I'll answer that later. I okay. got you. Okay, so let's let's get into the the early years of of mm-hmm. Iman. So um, I'm sitting here with two New Yorkers, so I I, I can't <laughs> wait to hear y'all kind of trade experiences and different shit. But growing up in Yonkers, I don't think I've ever been to Yonkers, so I don't know much about Yonkers. Uh-huh. Well, what's it like growing up in Yonkers? Uh, Yonkers is cool. It's like, you know, you need a car to get around for sure. (laughs) (laughs) But, uh, you know, Yonkers is like any other place. You know, every place got their hoods, their their suburbs, all that stuff. I live on the the suburbs of Yonkers and stuff. Mm -hmm. Uh, Because originally I grew up in uh, in Manhattan. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, I I lived in the the Dykeman area. People just love saying Dykeman thinking it's a whole city. It's literally just a street. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just 200 Street. That's all it is. Um, People really do make Dykeman seem they more they than they like. Yeah. Yeah. Dykeman, up to Dykeman. Yeah. Yo, Dykeman <laughs> is legit a street. That That's is it. so funny. But it'd be, it'd be a lit street, though. But, you know, but here's the thing, right? That's why I always say I say it the way that I just said it. Yeah. Because I know it's pub- Dykeman is publicized as the, oh, I know where that area yeah. is, if that's right. the case. Yeah. But I lived in Inwood. Okay. Inwood is literally 204th Street, and that was, you know, Dykeman is right down the street. Yeah. That's what it was. So I grew up there, um, you know, till I was like 11, 12, and then we moved to Yonkers and stuff because my parents just wanted to get a house and get away from, you know, what that place has to offer mm-hmm. and stuff. Um, but I went to school in Yonkers. I went to uh, the remainder of middle school and high school in Yonkers, and, you know, that's where you get to experience life. That's why I be saying I'm from Yonkers. I ended up living in Yonkers longer, Yeah, right. you know. But that's why, I, you know, I grew up there. I, I started learning things. I started become. I, I grew to be who I am today because of Yonkers and stuff. So, like I said, it's like every other place. There's ever there's a hood everywhere mm-hmm. and all that. So, yeah, Yonkers is cool. Do you remember the first thing that you wanted to be when you grew up? Or was it, yeah. was it always music? It was a rapper. Rapper. Yeah, I said that in kindergarten. Uh, wow. <laughs> yeah. How'd you know? So I saw Bow Wow on TV. Oh <laughs> my man! Yeah, so when I saw when I saw Bow Wow, <laughs> saw Harlem Shake. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Literally, uh, I remember seeing on TV there was like Bow Wow. I was obsessed with like Bow Wow, Ludacris, and Fab. Mm. And I was when I was growing up. Yo, you sound just like me. What? That, those were your people. Too? Like I just, you know, they had an era. Like each every yeah. person that you named, they mm-hmm. had like a crazy era. So. Yeah. I was I, like, I had a thing. Like I was just, I, I, I just loved those uh, the music the. The, the style of mm-hmm. how they would dress and all Especially that Especially Fab. Yeah, Fab always was fly. So, like, that stuff was, like, always dope to me. So, when I would, uh, growing up, I would see them on TV or even seeing Bow do Like Mike. And then it's just like, oh, there's a kid doing this. This is yeah. really cool and all that. So, that's what I always wanted I always wanted to be when I, uh, just seeing that. Yeah. And I was just like, yeah, and you know what? This is, I think this is what I want to do. Mm-hmm. But, uh... You know, as time went on, I definitely wasn't doing that. My parents did not want me to do any of that type of stuff. Of course course not. not. (laughs) Yeah, because it's like, especially where we were living at the time and stuff like that, it's easy to fall into all the negative stuff that's there. Like, I even look back at some people that are still there. There's a lot of people doing great, and there's a lot of people who are either dead in jail or, you know, doing something they're not supposed to be doing. So it's like, uh, you know, somehow that little boy in kindergarten that was saying, I want to be a rapper, ended up becoming a rapper. (laughs) And, you know... Uh, making it very very real so but but before that i was playing a lot of sports i was playing baseball mm. uh competitively with school and stuff you like, like that. you were a shortstop i was a second baseman i was close yeah, i was close, I was close. <laughs> yeah i was a second baseman uh i thought that was gonna be the the career path of like okay i'm gonna be in the mob i'm gonna do this i'm gonna do that yeah but uh i don't know i got i kept getting hurt a lot and i just i didn't really love it as mm. much as i thought i would but i always had a thing about writing whether it was poems to impress people or like, you know, just anything that had to do with writing, I really enjoyed it. I used to suck at rapping, so like, <laughs> literally, you know, I was one. Of, I'm one of those people that I gotta work ten times harder every time mm. to do the littlest thing that my little brother could do. Like, he's he's the talented right. one. For me, it was just like, I gotta, you know, I gotta work way harder, but that build a work ethic. Yeah. Right. So for me to be able to be where I'm at now is purely off of God and work. That's yeah. it. So that's that's how that is. Yeah. Can you describe the first like poem or song that you wrote? Um, I think the f- first poem I ever wrote was for my now fiance. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, I don't remember what exactly I said, but I just remember that I was I always try to impress her. Mm-hmm. Um, 
because we we grew up together. Uh, I, I know. To ask I was gonna say, how old were you? Yeah. <laughs> I, I met her in third grade. Oh my god! What? I met her in third That's grade. That's the dream, man. No, for it's, real. It's a couple of joints from my third grade, man. I, th- I thought. Wait, like, where y'all <laughs> at? It's not about me, though. <laughs> <laughs> now, nah, you know, it, it's it, like I, I used to tell her all the time. I'll just be because she ain't like me when we was young. Mm-hmm. But like, I would tell her. Starts. Yeah, and I'll be like, I'll tell. Her, I'm like, yo, <laughs> watch out for me. Like, <laughs> <laughs> don't will sleep. Be mine. Don't sleep. But look. Now it's we're incredible. freaking engaged and stuff, but we've been together for uh, we we weren't dating at the time. Right. That would that would be something else. I'm gonna say, <laughs> I hope not third grade. <laughs> third grade yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but we've been we've been together for we're in 2024, uh, 14 years. Wow, we've been together. That's amazing. So um, and I just used to try to impress her all the time. That was really it. I wanted to I wanted her to like me. Mm. That was it. But you know um, uh, I don't know. Like I can't remember the first rap I did. Actually, I could. I said something about like my name is I was freestyling on a lunch table. I was like, my name is E Money, something, something to the same. I could put five bullets to your brain or some shit like uh-huh. that. I was like, <laughs> and I'm in the lunchroom table just doing it. I'm like, what in the hell? Like, I don't even know how I just that just clicked right now. Mm-hmm. I can remember that. But that was like my first rap I ever did. And I was just, yeah, that was that was years ago. Mm. Okay, then the rest was history. Yeah, the rest was history. <laughs> um, like that was just a lot of failure, I guess you could say. Mm-hmm. But I, I won't. I can't say failure. It was lessons, trials and Trial tribulations. Yeah, trials and tribulations. Trial you know, that's what that's what that's what it is. It was just like constantly, you know, if you want something bad enough, you know, first off, if that's a part of God's plan for you. Then cool, you feel me? Like He's gonna constantly put the pieces in there to make you understand that and all that. But for me, it was just I just. You know, everything didn't come easy to me ever. Right. I had to work at it, but I wanted it so bad. And I got a, I got an obsession with wanting to be great mm-hmm. at things. Mm-hmm. So, like, you know, I would just keep working at it, keep working at it. And then didn't get my big break till, well, my my foot in the door was the whole DJ Enough thing yeah. with uh, when we dropped that mixtape in 2016. So, that to be continued, right? Yeah, to be yeah. continued. Um, yeah, that's how that happened. Well, that happened because uh, my producer, Rondon, he... He snuck into High 97 um, randomly one day. That didn't work out. Like <laughs> <laughs> He just gave me a call one day. It was just like, yo, I'm at High 97. Uh, I'm going to get enough to, to listen to your project and host it. I'm like, why didn't you call me to tell me that you're doing this? <laughs> he like, listen, it was He's, on the whim. Yeah, it was. It was. <laughs> he was going to go do something with construction. Like, look for a job with construction or something like that. Wow. And then randomly just got up, left, took the train, and went to High 97. And then... Found his way up there. And if you ever been to the old High 97 building, I don't know how you sneak through that. Like, that's not a that's not an easy place to, to sneak into. Mm. So, uh, yeah, he made it happen and stuff. Worked his way all the way to DJ Enough. And, and yeah, he, he, you know, that's how that happened. Yeah. And I've had that project since 2015. Mm. Um, and then we were able to drop it in 2016. And that came from me just not even knowing what I want. Like, I was like, how am I going to drop this project? This would be my introduction to to everything. You know, just being young, naive, and not yeah. even understanding how things need to go or anything yeah. like that. So that was the way that was presented to me. And I went with it. And, you know, I'm super grateful for that moment because a lot has changed from then. Yeah. Um. You know, the whole point of this is growth. Mm-hmm. Just do I like that project? Not anymore. Absolutely not. <laughs> I can't. I, somebody played me a song the other day. <laughs> Turn was, that it, shit it down. Was, you know, it was Turn that it was, down, brother. <laughs> actually, you know what it was? I was in L.A. with uh, for BT Weekend. I was in L.A. with Nico Brim and mm-hmm. uh, and our boy Dre. He shoots uh, all of our uh, all of my videos and stuff. Um, he was in the car, just going back to like, yo. Let's go to the oldest song from like the first thing and let's just see how it is. I was That's like, always Yo. so cringe. Oof. It was it was it was rough. Mm-hmm. It was rough. Yeah. But it was kind of cool to just see like, yo, there's certain things that you may have had when you was rapping at this time that you could just see how polished it is now. Yeah. The growth. And it's like, yeah, yeah, it's crazy to see that cuz that's almost 10 years ago. Mm-hmm. So like it's it's yeah. Special. Yeah, I one thing I appreciated is when I was doing my research slash stalking, um, <laughs> I, I went through your entire Instagram, and yeah. a lot of people when they get get on, they delete the old stuff. Yeah, they do. You have everything up there from 2016 yeah. onward, like the pick with DJ Enough when 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 you had the short haircut, like yeah. like every moment, the moment you got verified, you celebrating that. Like yeah. I, I love the documenting of the journey and the not running away from showing people. This is where I started. 
Mm-hmm. I might have, I might not have been as nice as I am now, but like, I, I want you to see this. Yeah. This is accessible for you. Like, mm-hmm. and I think, you know, a lot of people don't necessarily have that, that wherewithal or, or that ability to be vulnerable and be like, yeah, like here, you, you can see this. Like, I think, you could clown me for that. <laughs> I think it's important. Mm-hmm. I think it's important for people to feel, you know, there's people who have seen me from the beginning of this whole thing to even see the growth of that. Mm-hmm. People love championing somebody that they can see this genuine enough that they, they're invested in the story of what they're doing. Exactly. Yeah. So it's like, I never wanted to shy away from that. I'm not personal enough on Instagram <laughs> to, because I'm a very, I, I like to keep a lot of things private with certain things, but it's just like, also it's like, Man, if you go all the way back and you really see the journey of what this was and yeah. all that, like it's all gonna be there. I don't want to take any of that away. And even when I have a million followers, that's still gonna be there. Yeah, I'm not taking any of that away because people got to go back and look at these things. You can see how long this was. People say you got you got ten years into this to be an overnight success. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a so fact. It's like, yeah. hey, you can see all this if y'all want. It's right there. Yeah. So yeah. No, nah, it's dope. It, it helps it helps a person feel more connected. Like the journey of a creator. Regardless of what you're doing, like yeah. seeing those beginning steps, seeing the picks where they only got 13 likes, yeah. <laughs> and then over time, you know, pulling in thousands, and you know, like yeah. all that. So it's 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 cool to see because it's something I resonate with. Like, I, I don't have that. every old thing up, but I I, I still <laughs> do have a lot of older yeah. stuff. Nah, I got I got here. some stuff archived for sure. Yeah, yeah. But it's certain things you gotta put yeah, away, but yeah. some stuff you can show niggas. Like, I think yeah. it's important though, yeah. as an artist, because mm-hmm. like you said, people like to see that come up story and. Mm-hmm. It's not the the music industry isn't the way it used to be when we were younger. That's not like, right. you know, before if your homie snuck into Hot ninety seven and got DJ enough to listen to your tape, that would literally be it. But now you have to have the content, you mm-hmm. have to have a digital presence, you gotta have relationships with DSPs. Yeah. We're not selling products anymore. Mm-hmm. So it's just like how do you feel about like you said, Bow Wow was one of your first inspirations, yeah. and now that is just a, it's a completely different game. They're not even developing children anymore. Yeah. Like, how do you feel about entering the music industry in the climate that it is now? Um, it's a love hate relationship with it. Same. Cause I'm not, I'm not a big fan. <laughs> I don't like the music business. Yeah. Oh, I don't. It yeah. I, I understand it to, a, I, trust me, I studied this thing to, the best of my ability. Mm-hmm. And it's I'm constantly going to be learning more stuff. I don't like the music business at all. But I love creating. I love creating dope shit. That's like my favorite thing. So it's like, whether I'm directing something, whether I'm, you know, putting edits together for something or creating a song. I mean, my favorite thing ever out of this whole thing is performing. Mm-hmm. That's, that's my, like, put me on a stage... I'll handle the rest type of thing. Yeah, so we got to pop out yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what yeah. it sounds like. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so like, you know, even just getting into this whole thing, I feel like we're in a, we've never had this much information mm-hmm. or this much content ever in our lives. Yeah. And it's only grown by the day. Ex- and that's scary. 100 yeah. gigs. That's, <laughs> that is so scary. For real. Because it's like, oh, if you're not posting this every single day, you're not doing enough. No, um, <laughs> nah, this is a lot to keep up with. Yeah, you rehearsing. Yeah, like this is this is a lot. So it's like, you know, I try to do the most that I possibly can without having to, because there's a lot of, you know, you get burnt out a lot with mm-hmm. this stuff. And, you know, that's why I need my trip to Disney World or like something like that. Like that's it, to get away from this for a little bit. Yeah. But, you know, that that's why I'm saying like I, I, I try to work to the best of my ability, but there's... A lot of this is why I be mentioning like with how I my relationship with God and stuff like that too. Like, if I'm still waking up every morning and still have that hunger in me, mm-hmm. there's a reason why I still have that. If I if if that wasn't for me, that would have been stripped away from me a minute ago. Right, a fact. So like that's how I I kind of just keep seeing it. So as long as I still got that in me, I'm gonna just keep going. Yeah. So yeah. You 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 definitely through the music and through certain moves you give off the true student of a ga- of the game, like I don't want to say aura, but but, but, <laughs> but feeling like like one thing I noticed when I was when I was really digging through your catalog yeah. is you have DJs and people host your music like yeah. you yeah. had the track with Steph Cakes, yeah. you had Gabe P host uh, Phases Volume Two, mm-hmm. um, DJ Enough obviously hosting yeah. your first project like and I thought that was so cool because we don't really see that nowadays mm-hmm. like there's obviously the DJ drama who puts out an album himself or yeah. he links with certain people but I feel like artists coming up don't see the value in that and that just felt very old school to me so very. like yeah. what's well what's like your your mindset in like 
kind of doing something that's almost a lost art at this point, yeah. but making it so relevant. And also the people that you pick, like the platforms that they have. For sure. Um, that's something that I just, I always wanted to shine light on on dope people. Mm-hmm. So that comes with features that I do or or like Steph, Steph, that's, that's the homie. Yeah, she's great. That's, Shout she, out to Steph. That's, that's, that's hometown stuff. So right. She's from yeah, Yonkers. Yeah, yeah. She's from Yonkers? Okay. Yeah. So like, you know, I wanted to, I like doing things that people don't do. Or like, I'm the if I'm not mistaken, I'm the first artist to ever have on the radar host a mixtape. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. I'm, yeah. Yeah. I think like so. they, there's times that they have songs that they release, but yeah. like with another artist, but Gabe is not on the song yeah. or anything like that. And I wanted to do that. That's yeah. something for me. Like to the way I look at it, I'm like looking a couple of years from now. It's gonna be some history. It was. Today. It just felt so old school. You know what I'm game, saying? Talking shit like step in, don't get stepped on. Yeah, like And there was a lot of people who were trying to talk me out of doing it. Really? Yeah, there was. Why? Because people would have their own opinion. People are afraid of something that they never seen before. Mm-hmm. But they have seen it though, but and they it haven't used seen to work. It from Gabe. That's Ooh, the that's what they were talking exactly. about. Okay, okay. So when you do something that's different. You're always gonna get people who get excited from it, but you're also gonna get the people who are just Push like back. projecting mm, fears. Maybe, maybe yeah. that might not. Oh, uh, and then say they things and all that, but it worked. It yeah. was so well executed, like so just feel me clearly thought out. Yeah, mm-hmm. and like for me, if it wasn't dope, I would not put it out. Mm-hmm. So I had a vision for it, and it worked. Mm-hmm. And I told Gabe after that happened, I was like, "Yo, bro, I'm just letting you know right now. Once you do this, it's gonna be a." Bunch of artists hitting you up to host their stuff. That phone gonna be ringing. Trendsetter. <laughs> well, what happened right after? Even people that don't know who I am, it's not about that. Mm-hmm. Like, it's more nah. about the fact that they saw you do this. Yeah. So he said, "Yo, my DMs are blown up right now. <laughs> of how many people want to host? You about to turn game to the next drama? Yeah. <laughs> hey, oh. and, and, and well, if that could be the thing, then cool. Yeah. You feel me? That's a whole nother avenue that y'all haven't even done yet. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Go get, go do what you got to do, bro. Yeah. Because that helps. That helps on the radar as a whole too. Yeah. yeah. So I just saw it as an opportunity of just like, hey, damn, nobody's done this before. Well, I want this to feel like a mixtape. Mm-hmm. I want this to feel like all of that. Steph Cakes, you haven't heard her on a song, dude. She drops her own songs and stuff sometimes, and like she'll do the little hosting thing. But I yeah. was like, she's from Yonkers. I'm from Yonkers. Mm-hmm. I'm doing a Northeast song. Why are we right. not? Why is she not on this? Yeah. So you know, I I just. I'm appreciative that I'm able to, you know, have these relationships with other dope creatives and being able to, you know, for them to trust my vision mm-hmm. to be able to, ex- to, it can be executed the way that it has been. Yeah. So. And this convo reminds me of something that Will mentioned last time about, um, we were talking about Ice Spice mm-hmm. and just about how she tried to catapult to superstardom too fast before, mm-hmm. you know, kind of, like, she had the towns, but she had like the drill wave. She mm-hmm. didn't build like that core New York fan base. And I really love what you guys are doing, especially with the mixtape hostings, because it's like you're making sure you're building that mm-hmm. core New yeah. York audience and it feels real New York. Like Yeah. Absolutely. And I think that's that's something that I Wayno actually told me this years ago. Cause Wayno has seen me grow with, as from this as much as possible. He told me years ago, he was like, yo, you got two routes you can go. You either go that you tr- you go try to link up with the hottest person, go try to make this song. It'll probably do a little bit of something for a moment, but it'll probably drop off because you yep. haven't built your foundation yet. Mm-hmm. Or you take the long route, which I believe you're already going to do. You'll be a nonstop touring artist. It's going to take a little longer, but you get to build everything from the ground up and see what happens with it. Yeah. But he said, you're going to want to quit. You're going to get pissed. It's going to take a long time. Mm-hmm. But it's so much more, like, it's fruitful than for you to go this route. Yeah. And I always think about that. Um, he told me this maybe probably like seven, eight years ago. Mm-hmm. I'll just be thinking about that to this day of just like, yo, I'm seeing it little by little. Yeah. Like little by You're little. Building the bricks. Yeah. And uh, I always wanted to network across with people because as I'm growing, the other people are growing too. Yeah. yeah. We're the new generation of people that's going to be doing something and it's going to keep happening as the generations pass on and all that stuff. So it's like, that's how I just always seen it. And it's been, it's been something beautiful, honestly. Yeah. No, it's, it's super fun watching. Like, we should even speak about Gabe and On the Radar. Yeah. The phase of Cypher. 
I listen to that. <laughs> I listen to that often. I'm not going to front. Like, anytime I'm at work and I need a pick-me-up, like, I put that shit on. Like, yeah. Tony's verse, your verse. Yeah. Um, Fergie Baby's verse, of course. Yeah, like, yeah, it's just yeah. a couple of those that just like really amp me up. I mm -hmm. love the collective. Yeah. I love the support you have from one another. Y'all yeah. are really building equity within New York. Mm -hmm. And like outside of Jerome. Exactly. Absolutely. And, and, and <laughs> yeah. reminding niggas like, yeah. yo, lyricism can be cool. L and lyricism it's important can still. pop. Yeah. Wordplay is cool. Like, mm -hmm. you know, like, like, because, you know, it, and it's fun to make the jokes like, uh, you know, this, this nigga won't like, um, I, don't, I can't even think of like conscious rappers, introspective rappers, all that. Like, <laughs> yeah. like I think about um Shiggy's video from a couple months ago. Like, <laughs> oh, the yeah. I'm sorry, <laughs> that video <laughs> was <laughs> like, like yeah, that's funny, <laughs> but it's like, yo, it's, that was facts though. Yo, <laughs> no. like, he's a baba <laughs> like, that, That's just funny, but like, yeah. there's actual cool rappers who do that type yeah. of stuff, and it's not scaring the hoes. It's not, right. you know, like you know boring people like it's actually good stuff and so the phase of cypher was a good reminder of that because yeah. new york lately has been heavy melody drill yeah sample drill all that and then yeah yeah i come in just barred the fuck up in suits literally like, in yeah. suits yeah like okay. Okay. so well all right so i'll break all of that down so the whole suit idea was when we uh you know i was with my homie cree who works at audio mac oh shout she, out to cree yeah cree was the one who was like uh so HD and I, we dropped a song called Numbers Game. Yeah. And Y'all wearing suits. We were wearing man. suits in yeah. the video. And then she was like, I love the fact that you guys are like this. We get to see a different side of you guys. Mm -hmm. And we're being stupid as hell in the video and all that. <laughs> but like, she was like, yo, I'm telling y'all, y'all got to pull up in suits and just do that and on the radar. Because if y'all do that, the first thing that's gonna pop into everybody's head is like these niggas in suits. Yeah, mm -hmm. you feel me? The uh, twenty eleven good. And it good music. and it took me immediately. It took me to the good music cipher. Mm -hmm. That's one of the greatest ones ever. And I was like, yo, this is cool because one is the shock value and why they wearing suits. Two, nostalgia because of the good music cipher. Mm -hmm. I was like, yo, this could work. Yeah. So just imagine having to do the call to every artist being like, yo, um, <laughs> hey, buy a suit, nigga. You guys have to get some suits. <laughs> and they're like, nah, gang, we got with suits. I'm like, yo, just trust me. <laughs> we got some suits. We, we got to do this right. You got me and Joe just like scrambling the day of, going to Marshalls to get ties, mm -hmm. going to H&M, Zara, all this stuff to make sure that everybody was like, that everybody was good. Yeah. And when we finally did it, I just... My whole my whole vision for it was let's involve everybody who's featured on the phases project mm. Mm. because we all have our own we could all stand on our own name minus there was two people who were also supposed to be on it it was Kai Cash and it was uh it was Jay mm. Oh wow! Shout out to my guy Kai. Yeah, so them two were How supposed to. How come they didn't be, make it? It just couldn't. Scheduling. Happen. Yeah, it was. It just didn't work out. But um. You know, everything worked out the way they didn't need to. You get what I'm saying? So, yeah. like, we were able to just make a moment and to see the reaction of what it was. Yeah. And the most beautiful thing to me was seeing Fergie's jump up the Bro, way that it did. he's having a moment right now. Yeah. Like, like the people video. can't wait for that True BBs and Canes video. Yeah. <laughs> I cannot wait for, yeah, for him to tell you the story behind the whole Cypher thing. Mm -hmm. Because there's more, there's more to it. I, I think I saw him tweet like how he almost didn't do it or he, he was struggling with the verse, something like that. Like Okay, so it's something along the lines. Mm -hmm. Just know that I got a call and Joe got a call. Mm -hmm. And I'll, I'll let him say that when okay. it's his time. He said, we did it, Joe. For, yeah. for Fergie hasn't wanted to come through the pod, so I guess there's no better time than... Yeah, Joe, he, he could definitely say that story there yeah. for sure because I want, I want him to have that moment to explain all of that. But, like... Shout out to Cree, though, for that, yo, for Cree, that idea. Yo, Cree really did it's that, great. like, mm -hmm. for real, for real. And, like, to see... You know, I remember being on the phone with Ferg when, when he finally posted his because his was the last one to get posted. All right. And he... He snuck up and put the lyrics on the video. I was like, all right, cool. So, <laughs> so he, uh, I'm on the phone with him, and I'm I'm calling him to be like, yeah, you see what I tell, like that type of thing. Mm -hmm. And but here's what I'm not understanding. I refresh and it says ten thousand, bro, in like twenty One minutes. Yeah, yeah. and then I refreshed again and it said twenty five thousand. And we're on the phone in real time. I'm like, yo, bro, I think you're about to go viral organically and he mm -hmm. was like 
What you mean, gang? I'm like, yo, <laughs> I think you about to go viral right now because out of nowhere, bro, it's only been like 20 minutes and you at 50,000. Mm -hmm. yeah. He was like, I'm going to call you back. <laughs> like, seeing it what it was. Now it's at like 800,000 or something like yeah. that. And then collectively, it's almost at 2 million. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's like to see all of that. And I told Joe from the beginning of this whole thing, I was just like, yo, I don't know what this cypher is going to do. I just know it's special. Mm -hmm. And I know that something beautiful is going to come out of it for at least one of us. Mm -hmm. it, it's been beautiful for all of us, but like I, I, there was something that was going to happen. Yeah. And I didn't know what it was. And now we know what it was. Bro, I, I had what? people in Detroit hitting me up like, yo, that's that's real hip hop right there. <laughs> <Yeah. Freaky's verse. laughs> hip hop like, is back. Detroit niggas. Yo. I'm like, yo, this is going crazy. I, I, there was people, uh, one of my mans, uh, he lives in, uh, in the Bay. Mm -hmm. And he told me he was at a Starbucks, and then somebody told him he was like, "Yo, you listen to hip hop?" And he was like, "He was like, yeah." He was like, "Yo, you ever heard of Iman and Fergie, baby?" Mm. I was like, "No." In the Bay, and <laughs> tell was, me about him. I was like, "What is what? What is that? Yeah, that on the radar cipher that they just did. That's crazy." Mm -hmm. And I'm just thinking like, "Damn!" And then there will be I'll be walking around in L.A. and people are coming up to me telling me, "Yo, what y'all did is special." But we only got like 15,000 views on the thing. Mm -hmm. But I forget that social media is just so much bigger than that. Of yeah. like, exactly. All of us collectively, I think I had like 50,000 on my view. Everybody had like tons of thousands of things. Yeah. And that doesn't include like the pages ripping it off yeah, and posting on yeah, their yeah, platforms. Yeah. Like, so it was like, it was one of those moments where it was just like, yo, we really had a, a New York moment right now. Yeah. Real talk. And Legit. this all came from an idea. Yeah. Yeah. So I was just like, yo, this is, this is crazy. Yeah. So, and no, it shows the power of unity too. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. absolutely. Like, and it, it, it was just so cool to just listen to you rave about someone else. Like, because I feel like a lot of artists in interviews, like you know, they, they want to talk about themselves, promote shit. But like, you yeah. just sat here for like five minutes and just praise Fergie. Like, that was just so cool to me. I'm a like, fan it, of it, my guys, it, right? Man. Like, for real, you like, can tell I, us a brotherhood yeah. amongst yeah. all of y'all. For sure, for sure. And I think more than anything, like it just really. Really cool shit came out of that. Yeah. For real. So how, yeah. how did y'all all get connected? I feel like this is like this is like a New York super team right, right now. And, I'm and, interested. And, and I feel like I'm only seeing really the calm like yeah. I I've been familiar with Nico Brim for a few years. Yeah. Obviously familiar with H D, he's a stay busy alum. Uh familiar with Dizzy, he's a stay busy alum. Yeah. Um Tony I met a little little recently. Mm -hmm. Um uh, but like, I feel like I'm 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 only really catching the culmination of you all working together yeah. for you know this much time. So how did y'all initially get connected? Uh, we got connected through uh, well, all of us had our own relationship. Like for example, I met Dizzy five years ago at D Block. Mm -hmm. So okay. like, I used to because he used to come by to the to Lock Studio uh, to play stuff, and I'll be there. I was every, I was there every day for like five years. Mm -hmm. So like, um, you know, uh. HD I met because uh, my boy Oswin Benjamin introduced me to him at a show one time, mm -hmm. and we got cool. Uh, Nico, Nico's from Westchester as well, right. so we, you know, we linked up and got cool. Life of Tom, he's, uh, you know, it's like my little bro. Like he's he, <laughs> he's uh he's from the Heights, mm -hmm. and you know we got cool too. Uh, we met somewhere at, in Brooklyn one time, and, and Tony, you know, I met him through Dizzy, like you know Ferg. I met Ferg at the HD sessions that he would do. Mm. Yeah, like those. And I think that was the, I think the HD sessions kind of was a good introduction for all of us. Yeah. Because we would all pull up there and yeah. all that. So shout out to HD for that. Because yeah, that was that was like, I think that's a good way to say that. Because like, that's why we really all met each other. I think I met you at HD. Yeah, HD yeah, session. exactly. <laughs> See what I'm saying? So like, yeah, yeah. I think that's, that's, that's the cool thing about it. Like we were just, I think it was bound to happen like sooner or later because we was all in the same rooms already mm -hmm. but now yeah now we just uh we 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 got something in the works that is gonna be cool we've been working on a on a project hold on we about to get an exclusive, exclusive. there we yeah. go i want wait there we go <laughs> yeah we, we we've been working on a project uh i ain't gonna say when it's coming out or anything mm -hmm. like that but just know we we almost done with it too What's the title of oh. Phases? Because Phases was the title of your project. It was the, it was the name of the cipher. You got a project from 2019, I believe, was Phase Volume 1? Or, or One of those two, yeah. 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 Like, <laughs> so, like, Phases, phases <laughs> ha has been a thing for you for a while. What's yeah. what's that mean to you? So, um, during during COVID, uh, I, was, uh, I had to find a new way to kind of just be in front of people's faces. And yeah. I wanted to... Uh, 
take advantage of the fact that everybody was home. Like, under- okay. understanding that everybody was on their phone, they got nothing else better to do. So I started a whole series called Quarantine Flows. Mm. And I was recording, you know, I know how to record myself uh, using Pro Tools and stuff, so I would just record raps at home. they will be minute long. I tried to... I, this is actually where I picked up not cursing as much in my music. Mm. I don't ever really talk about that, but... Oh. Um, I didn't want to curse. Well, I was practicing to not curse as much in music because of ads. Mm. Oh, okay. Yeah. And Smart. I wanted to make sure that I was like, I can get these ads going. And it was a minute long. I would shoot these music videos with my phone and I would just, you know, do little different settings and stuff. And my mom would even help me with stuff. And she would just be like, oh, maybe you should do this today or do that. Aww. And I'll set up a little tripod and record myself, edit it, put the lyrics and all that. Mm-hmm. And I was doing that for every Monday for like three months. Mm. And... We, while we were still in COVID and things were starting to open up a little bit, I was like, damn, I don't want to keep calling this quarantine flows, but I want to keep this thing going. So I was like, why don't we just call it phases? Mm. And it would be a different phase every single time. So we did another one where I, I linked up with my boy, uh, Legacy. Uh, he he has a great company called Legacy Media where he's a photographer, videographer, everything. So definitely tap in with him. Uh, he linked up with me and we did, we did uh, like 10 music videos, minute long music videos and stuff. And we were dropping damn. it every week. And for the the four most popular ones, I was like, yo, let's just drop an EP and we'll add features to it so we could have my version of Rap With Friends type of project. Because so I wasn't smart. I wasn't collaborating with many people at the time. So, uh, you know, I, I was just trying to find a way to just keep putting it in people's faces. So first phases was a lo-fi type of project where it was like rapping over like lo-fi beats and stuff. And then phases volume two, um, I wanted to just do the complete opposite and just, just like like punch somebody in the face. <laughs> like, that's, that's, that's what that was. So it was like, because uh, even coming off of, uh, after the first phase is when I did my project Rosedale. And that's personally my favorite project that I've ever dropped mm. because of how personal it was to me and all that. And the things that I was talking about, being able to kind of open up the curtain a little bit and just, you know, say some things that I usually wouldn't say in records. Um and it was such a dark personal project with slower, more melodic, more R and B and all that type of stuff that I was like, nah, faces volume two gotta it gotta like punch for yeah. real. So I I really wanted it to be the complete opposite of what that was. Yeah. And, and it did. Yeah. <laughs> that should knock. Like that's uh, that's gym music. Right? Yeah, that's gym music that. right there for sure. Um you had a big moment in two thousand nineteen. You know, I talked a lot about you being a student of the game and yeah. kind of having an old school approach, but also kind of making music that fits within this this era mm. and 2019 you linked up with styles p and chic luch on uh roberto cavalli how, yeah, did, yeah. how did that, that that connection come about all right so uh roberto cavalli happened because i would be at d block uh studios um shout out to poobs and buddha for introducing us to poobs and poobs bringing us in uh poobs was the guy that he was like an engineer producer um we call him unk uh, he, he, you know, he's the one who put us on to like even being around the locks and we would be there every single day. Like I, I'm talking about like every chance I got, I would be there. You said for five years straight. For five <laughs> years straight. And I was literally, it had yeah. to be four or five years. Yeah. But like, I was literally writing to everything, like anything that was playing, uh, I would just write to it just because I wanted I never wanted to be the person who was annoying to be like, oh, check me out, check me out, this yeah. is that. But I always wanted to be ready just in case I was asked. As yeah. you should. And that was that was the thing. So I remember my first day being there, uh, I met Styles and he just he came up to me. And he was like, Yo, what do you do? And I'm like, Oh, I'm a I'm an artist, but I'm here with my producer Rondon. And he, you know, he's here to play beats for y'all and stuff like that. And he was like, Yo, put your project in my phone. Like I'll buy it right now. Wow. And I'll listen to it. So he bought it. He said, yo, I'm going to check it out on my flight to L.A. And when I get back, you know, we'll talk about it and stuff. And then randomly, uh, this is at the time when my fiance was, uh, she was in college. And it was upstate somewhere. And then randomly I got tagged in a tweet. And it was from Styles. And it said, yo, go check out Blessed by Iman. He's next up or something wow. like that. I was like, yo, that's, that's crazy. Love. <laughs> so then I remember he was, uh, he, was doing, uh, he was doing an event at his juice bar in the Bronx. And I went. And then he's on Instagram live and he's like, he turns the camera on me. He's like, we going to rhyme together. He's the one. Like all of this stuff. So it was like really I cool. I could hear that Styles voice yeah. too. <laughs> so like, it was really cool. So like, uh, 
you know, years went on, and then um, uh, I ha- I finally had the record that I felt that I wanted uh, I wanted Sheik and Styles on, mm-hmm. um, and I told you know I I gave it to them. Sheik was the first one to send it back. I asked for a sixteen. He gave me a thirty two. Goddamn. He was <laughs> he was just he was just feeling it. Yeah. And for me, I'm very competitive with my pain. So like it was one of those things that they go like, yo, you better not change your verse. I'm like, I promise you, I'm not. Because <laughs> 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 like I really like I really really knew what I had, mm-hmm. but it's funny because like I went into it. Um, with that, and then St- uh, Sheik sent his verse back, and I was just like, "Oh damn, he just out charisma, <laughs> like everything on this thing. That's that's hard." So I wanted to keep it that way, and then Styles was the last one to send it in, and I remember I was like going into, I was about to go into mixing the next day, and Styles like I I see Sheik and Styles in the they're in the in the back studio, so I was like, "Damn, should I walk in? Should I? All right, you know what? I'm gonna just walk in." And I was like, "Yo, bro." What's up? Where my verse at? <laughs> and he's like, why do you need your verse right now? Like, why now out of everything? I'm like, well, because I got to go mix tomorrow. Mm-hmm. So if you could hand yours in. And then Sheik is just talking shit right after that. Going like, yeah, you better go do it now because you ain't going to do better than me on that one. Like, <laughs> he's just like, <laughs> like going off like that. So then Styles literally did it right there mm-hmm. um, at the spot. Uh, took him 30 minutes. He don't write nothing. So mm-hmm. like he was just there going like this the entire time. And then. 30 minutes later, he he just spit the whole thing. And then that happened. And then from there, I remember there was a clip. Uh, I was doing a major stage uh, r- rapping that. Yeah. And then I think Poobs reposted it and then Kiss saw it. And then Kiss was like, why ain't I on the record? Like, <laughs> like, like <laughs> it's just like, it was just one of those things that I, uh, it was, I, I guess the vision for me was really just Styles and Chic where yeah. I heard. And I, uh, Kiss and I are definitely gonna be doing something though in the mm-hmm. in, uh, in the future. We talked about it before and everything. Mm-hmm. And then um, uh, from that, it ended up being for me being featured on Styles' album. Yeah, I was on a pro- on his project Presence, and I did a hook for a song called Yes Lord. I did not know that I was gonna be on the record though. Mm-hmm. It was one of those rec- It was one of those situations, and this is why I really learned this too. It's not about how talented you are. It's not about how any of these situations. It's just about who's present. Yeah, mm-hmm. and you being ready. Yeah, exactly. Because you was there putting in that work. Mm-hmm. I literally went to the studio that day just to go pick up a hard drive mm-hmm. that I left. And he's in the back working on the song. And I'm like, yo, this is crazy. Like, the beat was so, like, yo, this is hard. And then he was like, yo, write a hook to it. But I'm having trouble writing the hook to it because I'm thinking he wants me to write the hook for him. Mm-hmm. I don't, you know, and... Before people start going, he does, he, he handles all his stuff. Mm-hmm. He don't even write. He just goes. He is all in his brain. Yeah. Okay. So, um, but like yeah. So I'm thinking it's like, oh, maybe he wants me to write the hook for him, give him a direction or something like that. And then when I wrapped it, he said, all right, switch this to this, change this right here. All right, cool. Go spit it. I was like, wait, what? You want me to go write this? <laughs> he was like, yeah. And then while I'm doing it, a Benny the Butcher walks in. Wow. And uh, uh, West Side Gun walk in. Mm. And I was just like, yo, that's <laughs> crazy. And they go like, yo, who's who's homie? And I'm just, it's just me rapping. And he's mm. like, yo, this is nice. And I'm like, yeah, that's fire. So That's such a surreal moment. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> a lot of people don't know, be knowing that. A lot of people go to Yonkers all the time, but nobody just knows. Mm. Like, that studio was legendary. They, they, they ended up closing it and moved to a different spot. But, mm. like, that was, yeah. It was legendary moments just from being present being in there. these situations. That's what it's all about, it's just being there. Absolutely. People don't realize that. For yeah. real. I wanted to backtrack real quick, though, because mm-hmm. I know you said initially your parents wasn't with you pursuing a music career, yeah. but then your mom eventually helped you edit videos. How did, they, yeah, how did your family so, get on board? So um, I think it was more of the fact, because my parents, uh, they, raised, they raised my brother and I to kind of be very confident uh, people. Mm-hmm. So we, you know, Whenever we're doing anything, we we want to make sure that we're the best at it, and you know, move humble, move humble, you know, keep God first, but also like when you're gonna do something, you really gonna do it. Yeah. So, um, I had a I had an unwavering thought of just like whether y'all want this or not, this is what I'm doing, mm-hmm. type of thing, and it's to the point that they got no choice but to respect it. I know they, how that go. They may not have to like it. Mm-hmm. But you're going to respect the fact that I'm going to do this because I'm going to really show out when I mm-hmm. do it too. And 
it was one of those things for sure that like uh you know they my mom would go to the concert she's she's seen my a sold out show of mine before i was gonna be my next question yeah, like, like <laughs> she was in the front row one time and then i have a new rule where she, she my mom and my fiance cannot be in the front row at any shows no it gets all. too crazy. It's, it's they got to be with you on that stage. Yeah, I almost, I almost stopped the whole show because I was like, it was too much going on. So I was like, yeah, nah, y'all go to the back or y'all go be somewhere because we're not doing that right now. And then, um, yeah, my my pops was my pops got on board first. Mm. Uh, I think it was more of the safety with anything with with everything going on because he's a, he's like a, he be around a lot. Mm. So like my my mom my mom used was the one who used to play. Like a lot of classical music first when we was when we was young to like kind of like we'll fall asleep to it or just keep us calm in a way. Uh, and she'll play like a lot of Sade and like artists like Andrea Bocelli and like uh, Seal and stuff. Like it was just like a bunch of like random things that we would listen to. So hip hop was definitely not the the thing. But then I got my uncles who put me on everything. <laughs> it's right. just like yeah. So it was just. It was just different for like us growing up because I think what the the biggest thing was all right whatever our circumstances are right now, we want to show y'all that there's something different, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I respect them respect that you know thought of it and all that stuff and it was just like all right cool so this is gonna mold me to be the artist that I am today, and all that so yeah that's how I've been fire because I know you're you're Dominican. Yeah. I'm Haitian, so, so we share an island. Yeah. She's Panamanian, so we all kind of have that experience of yeah. yep. being in those types of families where there's yeah. the realistic careers and yeah, then there's stuff sure. you want to do and yeah. having to prove to them that you can do what you want to do at, oh, a, at a high level. Absolutely. And um, I think more than ever right now, I'm just, I'm, everything I said I wanted to do, I'm, I've, I've done it. Or yeah. I'm just trying to get, all, get it to the point that I see it in my mind. Yeah. Absolutely. It's e right. much easier for them to get on board when they see you can make a living off it. Like, yeah. yo, can you yeah. support yourself? Do you got insurance? Like, yeah. oh, like all mom, I got stuff. motion. Yeah. It's lit over yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I called my mom in LA. <laughs> when I was in LA, I was, because I, I talk a lot of shit about LA. Mm -hmm. um, Same. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a New Yorker. But, like, uh, so when I was in LA, I was, she was like, how's the trip? I'm like, I'm not going to lie to you. LA a little different when you got some motion. Yeah, <laughs> it is a little different when you got motion. <laughs> so I was like, and she, she just laughing because you don't really know what that means. I was just like, just know it's like, I'm in some rooms. I'm enjoying like, myself yeah, this time. It's, it's a little nice. I'm, 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 LA is a little different when you got some motion. That's all I, I said. I had a great time in LA. That's, That's so funny. <laughs> Speaking of motion, man, uh, you know, I don't, I think it's, did you grow up playing video games? Of course. Right? Yeah, of course. Well, what were your favorite video games growing up? Uh, SmackDown versus Raw. King. Uh, <laughs> I forgot you were a wrestling fan. Oh yeah. yeah, I'm a wrestling fan. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, uh, what else? I was playing a lot of uh, NBA Street Volume Two, mm -hmm. NFL Street Volume Two, Sly Cooper, Jack and Dexter. Uh, oh, I remember that. All all of these, and it's funny because I just uh, I got like a playstation on my laptop now mm -hmm. so i was just i just finally played def jam fight for new york for the first time wow. and really beat it yeah so like the last since i got back from la and stuff i've just been on my free time i'll just be playing that and i mm -hmm. finally beat it so now i'm gonna go on to the next game or whatever's there yeah <laughs> but you know identifying you want to be a rapper early playing video games throughout your life yeah like what was it a dream to get on a video game soundtrack Oh, for yo, I didn't know that was gonna happen. I'm not gonna mm -hmm. hold you. That was that was something that I was shocked about. Mm -hmm. Cause um, of course, you know, I want I wanted to be on anything, whether it was 2K, whether it was yeah. like any type of soundtrack that was involving hip hop. I was just like, yo, can, can I, how can I how can I get this sync deal? How can I do this? How can I do that? And then uh, shout out to Buddha Grants and uh, Mike Cuz. Um, they came to. Uh, they came to me with the opportunity to make a couple records for the Street Fighter uh, album. Nice. And uh, shout out to Nerds Clothing, too, because they, they were the ones who, you know, had the relationship with Street Fighter to even do so. Yeah. Um, I did four songs for them. Wow. Uh, they ended up choosing a song I did not think they would choose. And it was a song with uh, Oswin Benjamin and I and Aaron Green. It's called Wrong Ones, and it's a great record. I just didn't think that that was gonna be the one they took. It's I, always like that. <laughs> I, the one I thought they were gonna t take was the one that ended up on Phases Two mm -hmm. with Fergie and Dizzy. Oh yeah, yeah. That pipe down record I did that for Street Fighter. Wow. Oh. And I thought that was gonna be the one because it was like hard hitting horns. Mm -hmm. All this. There's, if you listen to my verse carefully, like 
I'm saying certain Street Fighter things in the verse. Mm-hmm. I just didn't but want to take it out. You just knew that was going to be the one. <laughs> I thought that was... Fergie's yeah. doing it too. Yeah. He's saying some Street Fighter... I said, yo, bro, don't curse on the verse. Mm-hmm. Just, just you know, put little references in there, all of that type of stuff. I was really like... I thought that was the one. Mm-hmm. And I didn't take it. So I was like, Shh, I'm I'm releasing this song regardless. This mm-hmm. song is hard. It is. So <laughs> it I appreciate is. it. So, yeah, to be... uh, You know, we even went to the Street Fighter uh, uh, release... Uh, thing that they were doing yeah. where it was at the uh, OS NYC and we were literally playing Street Fighter uh, like they had stations for us to play the game perform the record and all that stuff so it was it was really cool like to be able to do that and be a part of something like that and they even made me a character wow. where like Inspired. yeah they made me a character uh I'll show you out the picture when I get a chance, but like it, it was. Is it the one you post on your Instagram? Yeah. Okay. That. Yeah. Yeah. Fire. Yeah, so like. <laughs> he was in there looking swole. <laughs> yo, they had me ock. I was like, yo, this is hard, man. Like I really, really enjoyed that because I was like, yo, this is cool. So I, I think that was the most excited I was to announce something because mm-hmm. it's like this is different. Yeah. You don't get to really see that of just like, yo, here's me as a character and everything. Look mm-hmm. and. Yeah, I, I, I'm super proud of that moment. I, I, it still kind of like shocks me that it was like, yo, this actually happened. Yeah. So, yeah. And also turning your passion into profit. Where? Yeah. You that feel was, me? That was dope. Yeah. That was really, really dope for a lot, real. a lot of people don't recognize the the, the Sinks game. TVs, yeah. commercials, movies, soundtracks, yeah. all that. Like, that's a bag that could, you can make a living off that. You yeah. don't have to sign a major. You yeah. can literally just eat off of that. Yeah. Like, for exactly. a fact. For a fact. So I'm salute to that. That's incredible. Yeah, man. You, uh, even with that, you strike me as the type of person who, like, the big accomplishments that other people might get hyped for, those may not be the things that you're most proud of. So, like, well, what are the things you've done throughout your career that you're the most proud of? Uh, that I'm the most proud of? Um, oh, let's go back down memory lane real quick. So the DJ Enough thing was really cool uh, because that was my introduction into this whole thing. Yeah. Lit, uh, shortly after I had a sponsorship with Swisher Sweets. Wow. Nice. Um, but I don't smoke, which is <laughs> I was just about to say, yeah, are you so, a stoner? So no, I'm not actually. So um that was a big thing for me, actually. I had to really talk to him about it and I could talk about this now because that's years ago. But um I told him straight up, I was like, I can't you know, I don't smoke. Mm-hmm. They said, Well, oh, we just want you to focus on the artist stuff. And I was really, I was willing to turn the whole thing down and all that stuff because I didn't want to promote something like that because if I don't do it, I got to believe in it fully. And if I don't, you know, if that's not me, Respect. I don't want to do that. And the reason why I don't drink or smoke is because, you know, there's, I got alcoholics in my family yeah. and I've seen certain things with all that. So I just try and I, I, I know for myself, I got an addictive personality. Mm. So I know that if I like something, there's no such thing as moderation for me. Mm-hmm. So. True. I just always kept aware of that, and I like to be on my on, on, like I like to be aware of things and all that. So that's how I move with everything. So, um, you know, that was a really cool moment because they had me. They flew me out to LA for my first time. Um, they, that's where I met Don Tolliver because he was a part of the class that mm-hmm. I was in. Oh wow! So that was cool. Uh, I didn't know he was Don Tolliver though, at the time. <laughs> right. I met I met Mike Dean because I was excited to meet Mike Dean. Yeah. Um, and then he was with Don Tolliver. I was like, oh, this is cool. So we just met and all that. But um, they had me. So the artist project was this thing where they had each a couple of us from different regions of like, you got to perform with this artist for this thing. So like Machine Gun Kelly was stationed for Philadelphia. Mm-hmm. And since I was in New York, it was me, Sean Smith and Chill Moody. And we had to do a show. With, we opened up for Machine Gun Kelly in Philly. In front of a sold out crowd And we did an interview With him and stuff wow. And all of that That's fire And then There was like a voting process To see who's gonna go To the big show In, in New Orleans For New Year's Or something like that And it was with Machine Gun Kelly Gucci Mane Designer Fetty Wap and, Oh it was uh, up My yeah. dog Fetty Right It was, it was a it was bunch up. of us So like I ended up winning For my region Cause I had a As bunch you of should people, I had a bunch of people Voting So I ended up going To New Orleans For my first time And you know, that was really cool. No, lit. <laughs> that yeah. food out there. <laughs> Yo, I, didn't, I didn't get to experience it the, oh, the way that everybody does. Yeah. Because I was you really just there to do Busy. that. I yeah. went to a place called Morrow's, though, and I thought that was fire. That's the spot. That spot was good. That's the spot. Because I, like I like trying fried chicken from all these different places. You got to. You got to. That's, that's like a thing that I keep doing everywhere I go. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, it was it was a really, really cool moment, Uh, you know, to be able to get the respect and even have... The, these guys as my OGs as the locks 
you know, to be able to teach me things and kind yeah. of bring us in and, you know, make me an honorary D-block person and all that type of stuff. So that was really dope. Um, even doing the, you know, the On the Radar Cypher, that, like, the most recent. Selling out my first show ever was in uh, SOBs. Mm-hmm. And then we sold out. Legendary. We sold out uh, the Knitting Factory when they were doing hip-hop shows in mm-hmm. Brooklyn. Um, yeah, I sold that out too, which that, I was more proud about that one because that was my first time ever doing a show in Brooklyn. And right. having everybody from Yonkers, to put it in perspective, for me to even get here with the traffic and everything, took an hour and 30 minutes. So for to have people think. travel all the way to Brooklyn to and we sell that out, that was a special moment for me yeah. as well. Um, the Street Fighter thing. Uh, I'm sure there's a bunch in there, but like that's just like off the top of my head of what's coming up right now. Mm. If you had to make a five song playlist of like get to know Iman Nunez, yeah, the five song playlist. What's the five songs you would pick? Uh, Open Letter, Overdue, At This Moment. Uh, it's funny. I'm saying all the I'm saying all the songs that are not bops. <laughs> they're just like <laughs> they're That's like cool. uh, Pressure Makes Diamonds and. I'll say nothing left to say on the on the newest project. Uh, I think those. Okay. Yeah. Nothing left to say is oh yeah, that's like the that's like the penultimate one, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, I just learned what that was like last year. Nico Brim put me onto that the penultimate. Penultimate, yeah. Uh, I was like, yeah <laughs> yo, yo, it's important. Like as as like my listening habits, yeah. the song before the last song is always like that's the one that really got a yeah. hit for me because the last song just has a certain feeling. Yeah. But yeah. the one before it, like like it's kind of like when you're watching a show, the episode before the season finale that mm-hmm. really sets it up. That that'd be my favorite episode of a season of a show too. Yeah. So I think I think with like. Like, I chose those songs because, and of course, I'm sure there's other ones that are probably get to know Iman a little more, but that's mm-hmm. just the ones that are coming off right now. But, like, uh, I think those songs just kind of, I'm talking about pretty much where I'm at in my life yeah. or, like, things that I really feel or certain things. Like, Nothing Left to Say was a freaking Survivor's Guild song. Mm. Uh, like, uh, just something that I was feeling from somebody that I knew that passed away. Yeah. Or like at this moment, at this moment was a song about where I was at when my parents split up. Mm. So it's like it's it's all these type of things of just being able to just get all these different chapters of my life to be able to talk about it. Yeah, on uh, on I got time. You said like I f- I found my place. Like, yeah. What well, well, what is what's your place? I feel more than ever. I just understand who Iman is as an artist mm. and what. You know what Iman sells as a because it's not just selling music; it's selling it's selling who you are right. and understanding that you know. I've always had that underdog story. Mm. That was really that was all. Nothing was ever easy to me or anything like that. So Iman sells motivation. Mm. And it was just like, all right, how do you how do you do that? How are you constantly talking to people? How are you trying to make something impactful enough or anything like that? And that's the reason why I even leave how my Instagram is to leave all that stuff there. It's like, yo, bro, this is a journey. Mm-hmm. This has not been easy. This takes forever, but it's like I really love doing this. Yeah. I can tell. It's only gonna keep getting crazier and crazier as we go because it's a passion that I have for yeah. this thing. And, you know, I care about being great. I care about doing really dope things that actually stand out and all that. So that's where that really comes from. Mm-hmm. Love it, man. Fire. Love it. Love it. Love Thank it. you. Is there anything you want to promote for the people? All right. Let's see. Phases volume two. Make sure y'all go check that out. Um, it's uh, hosted by On The Radar. Uh, I'm going to go back to saying I'm the first artist to have On The Radar host the project. Talk so shit. make sure y'all go check that out. And 10 years from now, we're going to have this conversation again. Or you're going to see what it was. Mm-hmm. Two, um, we got the Phases Experience show happening at the Sultan Room. Uh, if this comes out before then, then hey, it will. see you at the show. It'll be out Wednesday. So. Okay, awesome. <laughs> so, <laughs> August 17th, we'll be doing the Phases Experience show hosted by On The Radar. We got Geogenesis on, on the bill. We got uh, Dominique, and we got some very special guests as well. And uh, stay tuned for some more music. Oh, I got a song coming out tonight at midnight. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I keep forgetting. You work so hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so uh, I got a song called Current Location dropping tonight at midnight, mm-hmm. um, produced by Jesus. Uh, this is the first single off of the Phases Deluxe. Mm. Um, it's a, it's another, it's another bop. Oh, just, <laughs> but I'm trying to get all the bops out of my system right yeah. now, so I can just go turn into an R&B artist right after this. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, uh, current location drops tonight. Video is done. That's going to be at 12 p.m. Uh, yeah, 
hope to see y'all at the show. And anybody that's watching this to see you at the show, it's going to be a great time. And I can't wait for, you know, all of us to see what's coming next. We got more music coming out before the year ends. And yeah, some special surprises. So, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Congrats on everything you're doing, man. Thank you. Once again, I want to thank my guy, Iman Nunez, for coming through. Clap it up for him. Thank you for my having guy. me. Incredible story, incredible success. Yeah. Um, just... Just the, the way you approach music, it's it's, it's refreshing to see. You know, <laughs> we, we've it. talked about it on the pod before about people who come in and see it as just a lick, just mm-hmm. a way to make money. But you have a true love for the art that's felt through the music. And then yeah. when, you, when you talk about it, everything just makes sense. It does. So <laughs> Thank you. keep doing Good what you're doing, man. Good luck on everything. Absolutely. Thank you so Absolutely. Much. Um, and yeah, so for, for Iman... For Miss Two Bs, for myself, the Bald Nigga Bomb Show, we want y'all <laughs> to stay safe, stay yeah. humble, and stay busy.